Welcome to Spellforce Conquest of EO. My name is Daz Tactic, and we're going to be looking at this pretty amazing game, actually. This is Spellforce as a series has been around for quite a long time, but this is actually a bit of a departure from the usual fare of just being a role play type game, and it's now really a combination of a role play and a strategy game. So I thought I'd actually cover it. It's probably not exactly the right fit for me personally, but I'll try to do my best to sort of just explain my um, you know my thoughts about the game because I'm, it's quite impressive actually what they've done. It's, um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> there's a lot to go through with this. There's the lore of the world, which I think I'll start that way, just so you get a bit of a bit of context as to as to what the settings actually are and sort of how the game is actually put together. Uh, there's also the, uh, the way that... Um, uh, that missions or, or quests are sort of handled in the game as well. Like I think that's, I'm going to have to talk a little bit about that. Uh, tactical combat will be important as well, as well as the magic system, the different types of units that you can then sort of use, the different types of, uh, I guess, the various mages that you sort of get to sort of start to sort of uh, have your particular run with uh, in the actual game itself as well. So there's a lot to cover. Let's start with EO itself because this is essentially called the Conquest of EO. And so th this is uh, EO. This is essentially the, the world of Spellforce uh, where you've got sort of like the uh, five major uh, continents uh, and we'll just go through them I guess. The ones that we don't know much about is Island, which is off to the uh, off into the west. There is actually a few other little sort of other continents and islands and so on and so forth, but Ironland is sort of like the big unknown, the uh, like the unknown un and untouched areas that uh, is there's no sort of real history to that. This is my understanding of, of the lore of uh, of Spellforce, uh, and so uh, the, over the other side we've got Godel Godland, which is the land of the dragons, and uh, there was like in in the history of Spellforce there was a period where the dragons dominated the land and sort of completely decimated everything and uh, and so essentially that's now over but um, there's still remnants of that particular era on the actual world the uh, most of the actual gameplay or not not for this game but over the course of of uh, the spell force uh, series has been taken place in these three different continents we've got zoo down the bottom through here we've got ergath back over here and we have fiara back in this side now zoo you'll sort of see this come up a little bit in time in the uh, in different descriptions and things in the game zoo is where the uh, i think it's called the is it the all fire or something that's anyway it's the magical system was actually uh, discovered at zoo so zoo is a sort of where the magical aspect of the world uh, came from and so a lot of the magic in the world came from here there was a uh, a group that like when the world was created there were some guardians that were left over which are sort of like demigods and so the, the guardians are still mentioned in the in the game as well so you've got these guardians which are very very high level and they sort of look after eo uh on behalf of the creator uh underneath them then were a race that came into zoo called the shapers and they were the ones who harnessed the um the all fire or the or the, the mana the energy and uh and so they actually created like the they then became uh corrupted i think over time slightly corrupted and then they fragmented across the these other continents and became the various sentient races of the continents humans dwarves elves dark elves um, what trolls i think there's all sorts of different things orcs i'm not sure if the shapers became the orcs etc but they certainly became the elves humans and the um and the dwarves so <laughs> zoo is sort of important in terms of being sort of like the the, the spiritual homeland of the of the continents uh, Urgath I don't know much about so that's sort of back over through here uh, but the, the where we're playing in this particular game is going to be all in Fiara and in fact it's all just in this place called Highmark and so even though it's the conquest of EO this first game and I'm thinking it's I'll say it, I'll call it the first game or a first iteration of the series is actually contained within the south of the wind wall Back and through this side, into the map, into the sort of middle of the of the map, in through this side, and then down through into the misty coast, and so it sort of just is literally just where the high mark actually is. Now the high mark consists of all of the different races, which is a, why it's such a great choice to actually have the game played here. And the map that we play doesn't change in when we play in this particular game. It is the map of high mark that we're playing on. 
Now, I'm guessing that they've called it the Conquest of EO, so that when they bring out other DLC, they may, for example, bring out a Nortlander DLC or a, um, a Finomir a DLC. Now, to just go through what actually does happen, the Wind Wall is, and the, um, the Grim Wall, is my understanding, are, are sort of the controlled by the Dwarves. This is sort of like their Dwarven, dwarven lands. Uh, there's, uh, where is it, the Darklands? I'm not sure what's it. There's... There's different demons and things through there. Dark elves, I think, are back, back over here, back in this sort of area. Uh, the orcs are over this way through the Misty Coast and down through the pits, down through this other side. There's um, the city of Lyraine back in through this side as well, which I think is the main city of, uh, of Highmark. Uh, there's the, the middle of Highmark is fairly friendly, and so just to, when we go and look at the maps, I'll then try to sort of explain where things actually are with relation to this particular uh, this particular map as well. So we've got sort of like more friendly areas back over through here. Going into more, as we go to the north, we're going to get sort of like more cold areas with, with dwarves. Um, over to the west, we're going to get start to get more... Uh, orcs, and I think to the south we start to get more demons, sort of more the way the pits and things actually sort of come into play. So that's sort of what we're going to be coming across in this particular game. Anyway, that's the bit of the, the story and the history of sort of where we start and why it's not the all of EO that we're playing on. It is just the high mark, but I like it. It's um, In that sense, I like that it's constrained because there's a lot that can be put into this small area. And I, as I say, I think that by calling it the conquest of EO, I'm assuming that's so that they can actually bring in other aspects to it to then make it much more broad over time. All right, let's get back into the game. Yeah, so um, anyway, we'll just uh, press any key to continue. By the way, there's a lot of different information that is just put through with a uh, little sort of uh, text information, which gives you a bit of a, a backstory about the world of Spellforce. And this is good stuff, like the Shapers are an ancient race who learned to harness the Allfire and were ultimately corrupted by its power. So there we go. So Zack and Nor are renegade guardians, the demigods, revered by the dark races, like the dark elves, the orcs, etc. And so there's um, th there's a whole range of different sorts of things you can start to sort of put together. Yeah, after taming the primal, uh, primal elements of Eo, Aenir has sent the guardians to protect his work. Aenir is like the the all father or the god. Uh, to this day, they guide me or whatever it might be, harvesting plants. Yeah, this is just in game sort of stuff. The illustrations, I've got to say, are beautiful in this game. Absolutely beautiful, like uh, sort of concept art. Very, very nicely done. Anyway, let's just get into it. Yeah, look at this. Look, look, isn't it just great, the actual look of it, the overall look of uh, what they've actually done with this? It's just beautiful, beautiful looking game. Uh, okay, so we're going to go and start a campaign. Now, I'll, uh, this will allow me then to talk about the different aspects of the game. I may be able to do this in two episodes, I'm guessing. So um, I don't think I can do it in one. I'm going to aim for to make it in, into one in one episode if I can. I may have to split it up, but we'll see how we go. So I'll start the campaign. Now, you've got three pre-built essentially mages and so these are the archetypes that you can actually then go of or you can create your own custom mage now when we look at the alchemist for, for example i'll just talk a little bit about each of these so be an alchemist a master of bottled elements brew potions and concoctions to support your soldiers in combat summon magical creatures and control nature itself uh, play style prefer lots of options in combat to overcome the odds with clever use of your resources and so the crafting that you use is alchemy. Now, there's not too many different options here. Again, maybe in the future they can add more in, but it's um, but it's interesting the way that they've actually combined things to get um, to maximise what you can then sort of do with a limited range of different sorts of things. The primary school of magic is nature, and the secondary school is enchantment. So that's actually with the alchemist. The necromancer, be a necromancer, the artist of life and death. Harvest souls from the bodies of fallen uh, to create your horde and flood the lands with your servants. And so the crafting that they use is a necromancy crafting. Um, so you prefer big armies which will happily sacrifice individual units. And the primary and secondary schools are both death in this particular instance or the artificer so be an artificer a creative magical items uh, craft gly glyphs and artifacts to provide your troops with a multitude of different upgrades and rest secrets from the earth itself this is much more of a dwarvish sort of style of, of, of gameplay you prefer quality over quantity and like to buff up individual units and so this their crafting skill or its crafting area is artificing so they like to create artifacts uh, so, and the primary school is Earthmaster, and the secondary school is Guardian. But we don't have to stick with those if we don't want to. We can go to Custom Mage, and then we can sort of go through, be whatever you want, create an archetype of your own conception, and shape your own legacy. So we can actually sort of combine the different bits and pieces. So we, with that, if we go to Continue, for example, and I'll, I'll probably go back and do it, we still only have the same main three 
aspects, like whether it's going to be alchemy, necromancy, or artificing. Let's just have a look at artif artificing back into here, for example. So uh, we'll just go continue. And then we have to choose our primary school of magic. And so we've got like death. You could So, so you could be an artificer that, that deals with death. Um, You've got Earthmaster, which is the one that the artificer has in the game itself. You've got enchantment back and through here. What is your playground? And bend the rules slightly in your favor. Summon imp and improve fantastical monsters. Enable your trips to reach remote places of these and research new spells faster. You've got Guardian, which is what the actual... It's an Earthmaster Guardian is the one that we actually do have in the game. Uh, protect and strengthen your troops. Bring light to the world and defend against the dark arts. Mentalism through here. So play with the minds of, of your own or the enemy's troops. Manipulate the local population into loving you and then nature as well which we saw with the um alchemist so uh, the wildlife around you will rise to help uh, you overcome so you can sort of summon in animals and things like this so each of these schools of magic sort of do have a different sort of bearing let's go back though um because you prim you you choose your primary and then your secondary and then you sort of play with that particular character i think what we'll do though for this run through is we'll go back I think I might just choose the artificer. I sort of, I sort of relate more to the quality over quantity, uh, with the actual units themselves. So that's sort of more where I would be wanting to start. Let's just go continue. But that's um, you can see there. There's, there's um, intricacy within intri intricacy, just w within simple elements, which I think is actually a, a nice way of actually sort of uh, having the game structured. So I think the structure is very, very good. By the way, I've also got to say that the um, with the game itself, the the actual writing in the game is very very succinct and uh, and very good. I've, it's, I've, I haven't found anything where it's overly bloated or anything where it um, under describes. You know, so it's really a, a really good. It's, it's just hit the mark beautifully with the actual writing. As I say, I haven't found a single aspect of the writing that has made me think, oh, that's just too verbose. And I was worried about that at the start because this is. A lot, a lot of this is a role play type game, and so I didn't want to get stuck in that in that sort of uh, reading and reading and reading and reading. Uh, you know, particularly if I'm recording it, I don't mind playing games like that. I just don't like recording games like that. So anyway, choose your starting location. Now, remember the map I showed you, Highmark. These are the areas within Highmark. So this peaceful valley is the breadbasket of the Highmark. This is the center of Highmark. Uh, so uh, bugs uh, have recently infested the fields and granaries, so we don't have too much to deal with. The challenge is pleasant, so it's not a very difficult one. This is the golden fields in the center of in center of the land. Enemies are goblins, bandits, and insects. Uh, resources are cultivated plants. Spar it's sparse in ore, though, and so accessibility, civilized central region. Now, we rely on ore if we're going to be playing as the artificer. So this is actually a more difficult start than what it's actually saying is a pleasant start because we won't actually have... A lot of the things that we need as an artificer. If we started off as a as an alchemist, perfect. It's a perfect start for an alchemist. Uh, so we've got this one through here, the, the golden fields. Um, so uh, alluvian. So this forest and lakes uh, fill this region, once populated by elves. So this must be in the south somewhere. It's probably the south. I'm guessing the south uh, east, but I'm not sure. Um, dangerous beasts roam the, the uh, forest, rich in wildlife, and the fanatics of the new. The new purity extend their grasp here. So this is a medium challenge. Religious fanatics and beasts are the enemies. Diverse flora. Accessibility, a central wilderness back in through there as well. Uh, Draycott is up in the north. This is um, so deep in the northern Windwall Mountains. The dwarves here are busy, are busy mining precious metals. Recent events have seen an uprising of the granite dwarf faction. So these are, this is a tough challenge. The enemies are dwarves, mountain beasts and monsters. It's rich in ore. So again, probably going to be a good start for us, I think. So I think I'll actually start in here. Remote mountain region is the accessibility back and through there. Gilly Shire is just to the, um, just to the, you, like, because you, these are all in the one map. There's just one big map that you're playing on. So you're just choosing where in the map you're starting. Now, Gilly Shire is just slightly to the east of the Golden Fields. And so this easternmost region of the Highmark is struggling with Orcish raiders, robbing its resources. Lately, undead have been flooding in from the north as well. So it's considered a tough, a tough challenge. Enemies are orcs, undead, and the hive. Uh, resources, cultivated flora, iron deposits, and remote war-torn region. So is, is sort of what this one is of Gillyshire. Then the Misty Coast is in the is in the west. So uh, this is a, a coastal region covered in a thick mist. A small orcish settlement has been established here recently, holding on for survival. So this is a brutal challenge. Orcs and swamp monsters, corrupted plants and ore. A remote coastal region. So this is a difficult start where the orcs actually are. So that's the uh, they're the different sorts of starts, all within different regions of the actual main map itself. So just 
you know, like again, it's for, for me personally, I love random maps. I absolutely love them. And so this for me is a, a negative, but that's from my game style. And I don't want that to cloud the what I'm describing about the game. But for, for me personally, I much, much prefer to have a random map to play on than a preset map. So this is one massive preset map uh, that we play on. But having said that, the aspects of the map, the, like the, I guess the, um, uh, where the, uh, you know, where the goody huts would be and, and spawn locations, that will change a little bit over time. It's, it's not, an, again, not enough for me personally, but I think that if you enjoy role play type games um, and strategy games, you will actually get what you want out of this game. So um, anyway, that's again, just a, one of my little quirks that <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, as you, those of you that do follow this channel, uh, you'll you will know that I really, really do like my random maps. Anyway, Draycott is where we're going to start, so we we'll just go continue and choose your difficulty. I think what we'll do is I've been playing on balanced uh, in Explorer mode a little bit, just to sort of I, I've played I've played on Explorer a few times just to expand out and sort of see how far I can go before I start get cut down by different different forces. And that's allowed me to sort of then find these other locations that with the different other starts. So that's why I'm, I'm about 98% sure that we're playing on one big map, no matter where you actually start. Let's just go with, with balanced. So um, now what we can expect through here, world progression is going to be balanced. The enemy aggressiveness is going to be regular attacks on the tower. Enemy strength is going to be balanced stacks. Economy is going to be balanced and the battle AI is going to be balanced. So this cannot be changed later in the game. So um, you may want to sort of start again. Now, the world progression, there's a lot of stuff that's actually pre-built into the actual game itself. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's also um, like a lot of the quests you can sort of do as almost like side quests. But there is one central quest to sort of to progress through the game itself. So that is not procedural, but there are procedural quests in the game. So again, personally, I much prefer not having any sort of quest system uh, and and just to, just to play the game as a strategy game. But it does actually have, as I say, the writing is very very good with this. It does progress you through, but. For me, the replay value would be limited because of that, but even though you do actually have other sorts of ways you can play the game. So the role play aspect for me doesn't work, but I don't like role play games. So <laughs> there we go. So just, just as a matter of disclosure, that's sort of where my where my head is at. But I do understand that this game is going to actually not, it's not built for people like me. It's built for people who, who like stories, role play, progression, that sort of thing. Start the campaign, in we go. So the Shai Khan descended from an evil mage who mixed his blood with that of a dragon. Uh, one of each generation always carries the mage's soul and they are universally mistrusted. So the, um, the circle is a mage circle and we're trying to break into that or to try to dominate that uh, is the actual backstory. We'll be live streaming uh, Spellforce Conquest of EO so I'll just sort of get into it and uh, I'll also be uploading this to YouTube so welcome if you're on YouTube. I won't be live streaming to YouTube but this will be just a... Uh, I'll be using this live stream as the basis for the uh, explaining things in YouTube as well. Uh, we'll go across. Okay, so we're going to start a new campaign. So I love the graphics in this. It's just beautiful graphics. Uh, the illustration is really, really exceptional. I'm pretty sure I can't actually pause. I'll, um, I'll just let it go. Just let it continue on. You look at the wonderful artwork. Here we go. Press any key to continue. We're in. So, um, so I'll just read out the storyline. Um, so when a message from your master told you he had discovered a way to channel the all fire and urge you to come to, the, to his tower, you quickly gathered your entourage and set out. This letter contained little more than his note and a, and a small flute exquisitely carved and bearing your master's sigil. He seems to fear running afoul of the Circle of Mages, the most powerful covenant of ma magic users on EO. His tower now before you bears uh, signs of a terrible battle having raged here or rage there. So go to the tower immediately is basically the story. This is the start of the main quest. So we'll, I'm not sure the best place where I should sit. I'll sit I'll sit where I am down here. This one, hopefully by changing this, this mode, we should be okay. All right, so the map itself is quite large. There is like a cloth map style. You can see Draycott is just starting to sort of be, be written in through there. But this is the whole map. If we had it started in, um, for example, in uh, in those golden fields, we'd be down in here somewhere. And so it's all in here on the same one big map. It's just where you start is the change. And so there is a mixture of uh, of the different types of things that you then do 
with the game as in terms of um, like you've got the same story and you'll notice there that the master's tower is, is being, has been labeled with that little symbol so this is the, this is the main storyline that we're going through I've got I've still got the uh, really poor frame rates God, those frame rates are terrible they're really bad everywhere ah oh, damn it I can't do that uh, I'll just turn off my face see if that fixes things up it did okay it was me I was the problem <laughs> all right we'll see how we go with that uh, anyway this is our, our starting group in through this side um, so I'll just keep that one sort of selected and uh, so we what you can see through here is we've got like a um, Essentially, uh, this is a uh, the Artificer Minions. Now, we don't get these again, I don't believe, and they also don't upgrade. So they've got no experience points. So they are just what they are. Um, so they're not something we want to be using too much. What's interesting here, though, if we have a look through it in some sort of detail, is we actually do actually have these glyphs slots. So we can put glyphs into these, or glyphs, however you pronounce it, uh, to then enhance the power of the actual unit itself. Uh, which is really quite cool. So it's um, this one. This is again a bit like the modding in Planetfall. Like if you're sort of uh, used to uh, used to the way that the modding sort of works, this is like a mod system uh, within the game itself. Um, so I'll just read a few more of the comments there. Um, just pause time for us. You've done that one through there. Um, uh, so Blast Pop saying my concern is uh, does it have replayability or is it more or less uh, one and then done? I still don't fully know. I'm finding that because the main quest doesn't really change much, I'm finding that that aspect is always the same, uh, which I don't like. But then there are actually side quests and there's other things that actually happen around you, which is not part of that main quest. And so there is replay value. There, the Even though the map itself is actually the same every single time, the the uh, I guess the resources on the map are, are random. So... It is different every time you do play it. It's just not dramatically different. Like it's not like, a, a, for example, Master of Magic or Age of Wonders where you've got a completely randomized map. In this case, it's the same map, but you do actually have different things that do prompt you along along as you go. So it's not exactly the same run all the way through. It, it does change. So I'll be, I'll be back saying, oh, is this a new game? Yes, it is. Um, uh, the spell to summon those guys in. Oh, okay, maybe so. Maybe we can get them later on. But they don't actually upgrade as such. Uh, these have got these have got a, a fireball spell. We'll, we'll have a look at these when we get into the actual fighting. They uh, they they are um, useful, very very useful. You can actually get rid of the units if you're wanting to. We don't want to do that. And we've got two of the goblin brawlers, and so these are just uh, small units that uh, essentially ent entry level fighters. And so these have just got a melee attack. These ones do have experience, and so the experience does actually enhance them. So you do want to start to progress your actual units. And again, this is, this feels much more like a um, a random game than a, than a progression game as such. Um, so um, so uh, Dark Fire Phoenix is saying oh, they can also mine the small fire throws. Yes, they 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 can actually go onto mines and mine that mine those areas. Just close that one off. Anyway, our first goal is to go to the Master's Tower. Now, we also have like mana. This is randomly placed on the actual map itself. So just go there, pick up mana, back it going up. And here we've got gold, mana. Uh, this is the all fire, I think. And then we've got research. If I just go continue. Oh, that's, that's, sorry, this is mastery. This is like, this is your spell casting. This is all fire over through here. And then you've got research back over this other side. So the first quest is to go into here. So the corpses and debris marking the flight inside the great hall of your master's tower fill you with grief for him. Instinctively, your hands go to the flute he sent you with his letter. You trace the fine carvings with your fingers, and memories of your time here flood your mind. Suddenly the flute seems to hum and vibrate, and a small sound emanates from it. So we examine the flute. Now this is just a combat tutorial, so I'm just going to skip over this one through here. Uh, so back, essentially what's happened is the tower has been attacked. You're a minion of, of your master. The master has disappeared. And so you see your old master leading one of the groups. This must be the battle of the tower. I already know what happened. I won't play that one out again because we'll have a lot more combat anyway. Impressions of the fighting still play in your mind as you slowly walk up the dented stairway. The tower, damaged and deserted, uh, still retains your master's presence somehow, willing you onwards. Whatever happened here will, will not be forgotten. You are sure there is uh, more to discover. Your master has always uh, it was always adept at hiding his secrets, but you are determined to uncover them. 
This is the game. So you are trying to uncover the secrets of your master. So uh, hi, Tarank, how are you going? Uh, imagine being vaxxed is saying uh, is 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 saying is the uh, is the newest Spellforce game. I re remember the first one being a regular RTS. Uh, this one looks very Age of Wonders three ish. Yes, it's this is it's it certainly is a role play game, um, and it's it's not real time. This is actually all completely turn based. So it is very much like Age of Wonders in that sense. But there is this main storyline, and you can always divert away from the storyline. You don't have to follow it all the way through. So we'll set up in the tower. So the tower is now belonging to us. We've now got a few extra little things that then come up through here. You take stock. The entry hall's golden chandelier has been stolen and its soft carpets are gone. Your master's tower was not just attacked but also robbed, it appears. On closer inspection, there are several tracks out of the tower. Traces of torn fabrics and, uh, and dropped cutlery lead to a, a goblin camp not far from here. So we go to the goblin camp and find the thieves. Okay, this will, um, this will end this particular part of the adventure, but this is still all main... That, that little symbol there is telling us that this is a main storyline. And so the tower itself, I'll explain the concept of what's going on as we as we do this. It's quite cool the way it does work. Uh, now we've got certain areas in through here as well. Like this is a dwarven windweed. There's a harvestable location. It's not harvestable from our miner minion. So we have to find a mine for that for that. Like that's potentially a mine there. I don't know, I can't see it clearly. Actually, that would be there. This one here would be, a, actually, that's no, a cave. Anyway, we'll find mineable locations. This is the area around the, the around the tower that we control. Anything that's inside this, we can then actually get stuff from there. Now, when we have a look at the goblin camp and have a look at this one through here, it enables the hiring of goblins. That little symbol there in white is showing that even though we control the area, we don't control the actual camp itself yet. And so it's if, if we control that, we'd come up like a, a yellow or a gold color. This this does change the the where that one is sitting on the map will change from time to time. This does not change. This is essentially like a mine. Actually, there's a mine there, and so um, this is owned by Independence. We're going to have to attack that one to get that one. So certain things will always be on the maps, but then other little areas will then be randomly placed. So it's a bit of a combination between a preset map and a random map. Uh, anyway, the um, and up through here we've got two flashing things. We can now go back into the tower. We can start building a room. We might as well do that one. So we'll just go across. The only one we can afford to get is the Glyph Smithy. So we'll go and grab that one. We'll build that. Um, that will happen in one turn, and that will then allow us to then construct Glyphs. Now, the first part of the game is always pretty much the same, just setting up your tower, uh, going to your inventory. Just, it just, just shows you what you've got. Currently, we've got like one mountain copper and, uh, and two lots of ash. But I'll show you how these work when we get into crafting. So it's um, interesting the way it does work, but um, we don't need to do that one just yet. Now we can still move off this turn. We've still got a movement for our for our characters. So let's go across into here, and we'll just right click. So as you approach the camp, you find a few goblins in a desperate struggle against a group of humans. By the time you arrive, many of the goblins have already been struck down and the humans have started looting the makeshift resting place. So we can either attack the looters or hail them. Now this does change a little bit from time to time. Hi Grumpy Old Gamer, how are you going? Um, so you're saying, uh, yep, so what's this you're playing this time? This is Spellforce Conquest of EO, which is a new game that's just come out. So it's, it's like a role play game with a with a definite progression through the role play aspects, but with a a bit more of a loose feel turn based strategy. So we can attack the looters. Their their overall strength is one hundred and twenty one. Our overall strength is one hundred and sixty four. So we do have an advantage. Let's not hail them. Let's actually attack them so you can see what the combat looks like. And so we can see back and through here. Um, we should and this is this, I find that this is fairly accurate. Uh, what we actually have, we've got the uh, a decisive victory. And we might lose some units, so we can go in with our particular group. Now they've got like a, um, a cutthroat in through this side, who's got a melee attack but also throws knives. The knife throwing isn't very, doesn't do a hell of a lot of damage. But these are tier two. These are fairly, fairly high level, uh, higher level than what we are. Uh, we'll just close that one. And then they've also then got these guys, which are arsonists, and so they throw torches, doing 34 fire damage uh, or elemental damage. 
uh, to an enemy unit within five range, and then they've got a melee attack as well for 17. Now, again, the, the, the tactical combat in this game is actually fairly cool. It actually works very, very well. And so if we go and start the battle, like this is a not, it's not a given like with, with this, this particular battle. And as I say, this is fairly accurate from what I've sort of seen. But you can change what actually does happen here. One thing I don't like about the combat is I wish it was like Age of Wonders where it allowed you to re redo the battle from time to time. So um, let's go in. They're coming across the ice. I do like the graphics. It's, it's quite cool. So we took 11 damage in through there. So our hit points, 55, 44 in through that side. Now that's going to be a ranged unit. This is interesting because we do actually have like an area that's now splitting the um, splitting splitting the uh, the combat up. This is actually interesting as well from the perspective that it. Um, I, th I don't know if this is randomly built each time, but I do. I like you don't often see exactly the same map, so I'm not sure if these the if these are random. Uh, this is very much like Age of Wonders the way it sort of does work. So just reading a few more, a bit more of the comments there. So um, Mad Men and saying, uh, this game is great. I love the RPG and reputation mechanic. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I don't love it, but I, I, I respect the game because it, it, it's what it does, it does well. But it's not my type of game. I do like random games. Uh, so rather than saying, I think for, uh, it's from the same devs who made a Fantasy General 2, it is indeed, yes. And that was a, that had some very good combat mechanics as well. And so when we have a look at our, our characters in through here, we've got our Artifice of Minions. These are stronger than the others that we actually have. Uh, we've got the Fireball. Now you'll notice that there is actually uh, like different, um, very much like Age of Wonders. It's got the three different actions. And so if we move into here, I'm going to have two actions. Move into here, I've got one action. And so if we have a look at the Fireball spell, this one uses one to three actions. So we can like we can do it multiple times, just 20 elemental damage to an enemy within five range. And so if we did it from in here, one, two, three, four, five, it's right on the limit. So we get two shots at that one through there. Now, what we might do is I might move these around so we can actually take this one on. So we'll move that one past where we're going to be positioning the other one. And so it's now moved into that side and uh, we can then just sort of go into guard mode. So this is, this feels very much like Age of Wonders. Let's move both of those across. Just avoid this one here for, for a little while. And we'll just deal with the one, one at a time. And so I'm gonna move this one across. If I move that one to there, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, so I can actually just keep these together. And so from that position there, I can then go and th uh, throw the fireball. Now the fireball, I've got two attacks. It's going to be do between a ten and sixteen damage. It's not going to do. It's not going to be great. But again, the random number generator in this I like. Like it's, it you got like a baseline that actually where it does that does do damage. It's not it's not like a hit and miss style of attack. So uh, it's it feels good the way that this actually does work. And again, I would love uh, the little nuance that you actually have with the way that the combat, it's it's simpler than Age of Wonders, but much, much more uh, detailed and nuanced than, for example, Master of Magic. So we've got seven and then six with the, uh, with the damage that came in. So they're down to 41 now. Uh, now it's awaiting orders. Uh, this one here is just go across this one we didn't do anything with so we'll execute those orders and uh, waiting orders in through here execute now if I don't do the if I don't actually execute those orders then that that will just sort of you know it'll end it, it, I can end the turn and it'll still just do what it's doing and they're coming through now we've we've um, we've sort of got our, our um, our, what is it, the uh, the guard was up, which does protect us a little bit. And so you can use these in different ways. Now this one here, can't it can go across into there, but it can't get across into here. So for it to move around, all this one can do is use its ranged attack, which we knew before was quite weak. It's only six physical damage. And so it's not gonna do a hell of a lot of damage. So if we, we might as well finish off this guy here first. Now we've got different ways we can do this. If I move into there, I can then just do a, a big attack. It's Almost got a chance of killing this one off. This one's got 26 points left. If I hit this one in here, it does 24 to 34. So there's a good chance that we'll actually go and get a, an actual kill here. Um, if I 
hit this one here, we don't get the kill. The most we can do is 24 with the, with lucky shots. Back over this side, uh, and again, I want to get the three shots. I'll start to weaken this one down. And this one here, as I say, we've got the uh, three different shots. There will be a retaliation. We're going to take a fair, fair bit of a, a hit there. If I go this way, I can f start to flank it. So I'll do this one around in here. And so I'll actually bring this one back in around so I get a flanking shot with one shot. Now this is going to then do between 13 and 20 damage with just the one shot. And you can see that it's got the plus with the flanking. And so by flanking this one, I now, I now come in where it, I don't get a retaliation shot against me. And we do extra damage with the flank. So we did 15 damage. We now turn this one around. Again, very much like Age of Wonders. This We've lost one of our action points here for the simple reason that we were um, uh, dealing with the... Uh, like, you know, we'd been attacked and we've retaliated. Now we have this one. We have a definite kill. There's only 11 points left. We're doing a flanking shot through here. So this is a, an actual kill. Bang, gone. And that way we didn't take any of the actual damage coming back because of the flanking shot that was taken through there. I hope that makes sense. But it is, um, it's got a good system. Again, I would love to see Master of Magic with this sort of system in it. Um, okay, so uh, just reading a few more of the comments there. Um, so Dale Ren is saying, is there more sandbox version of the campaign where you don't have to do the main story? You can go off and just do your own thing if you want to, but the game is, it is story driven. So you sort of, you sort of, you don't have to do it. You can sort of just take your time doing the main quest. So you do have a lot of agency to do what you want to do in the game. Uh, yeah, so in that sense, it, it's, it's fairly cool the way that one does actually work. Now we've got this one sort of isolated because of this water. We were very lucky with this map. That we're able to sort of position all of our forces here. We'll end our turn. Yeah, they're going to have to start to come around the long way. <laughs> and so what we can now do is we can set up for the next attack uh, where this one will then come in. Now this one, if we have a look at him, if I just uh, go back across, he can get to where we are right in here. Now, I think what I'll do is I'll just get ready for the attack. I'm assuming he'll possibly do a ranged attack, come in and do a ranged attack against something, but his ranged attack just isn't all that good. So I'm just going to move this one back one. Oops, hang on, right click. And uh, facing is important, so I can actually, oh, I think I did that one wrong. Move that one back. I've screwed this one up now with the, uh, with the movements. Position that one there. Yeah, I screwed that one up. And I want to get it again in, into a position where I can do a flanking shot if I need to. So they've got the guard up. We'll just end our turn here. And he's positioned himself in a way that we can then get a good flanking shot coming up against him. Now, I'm going to spin him... I'm just trying to think, I've got the shot where I can just go into there and get two shots with with a, a bit of retaliation. Let's butter it up first with this one here. So we're going to do. We, there's a chance we can kill him off with just the um, with just the minion. And he is burning now. So he's now disordered as well. So if we have a look and see what his um, what his uh, card now actually has. So burning. I love the information that the game does give you. So deals 10% uh, of maximum health as elemental damage and reduces uh, willpower by one at the start of the unit's turn. Does not, um, does not affect ethereal units. And disordered, uh, I'm not sure where we see that in this list. Oh, there it is there. So minus two damage. So basically it's it just isn't gonna be as effective with its actual fight. Uh, so we can bring this one in. We just One shot is gonna kill this thing. So again, we just get a flanking shot. But positioning is very important in the game. One thing we didn't see in this was the like the height. The height also has a bearing, which is quite good. Yep. So um, so imagine as in saying willpower equals morale. Yes, pretty much. Uh, sorry, reading a few more of the comments there. Uh, hi, Sapior. Some of the Jet Spoon is saying uh, writing bull hat the developer in in stream and he has questioned on replayability. He essentially said that the map is uh, handcrafted and the main storyline is fixed, but there is some randomization. Some. 
the, the key word there is some. Uh, like enemy spawning and, and composition, the emphasis seems to be on uh, perfecting your playthrough in replays. There's 700 adventures or side quests, I guess. The, I, I, was, I thought the side quests would have a bigger role, but you can do them. But yeah, for me, the, um, you are pushed along that main storyline, which doesn't change depending on where you start or what you do. It doesn't change. So even though you've got like five different locations you start with, the story is still the story. It's just one story from what I can see. So for me, that's a negative just from my own personal preference with, with the way that I like to play games. I do love random randomly generated uh, games but i know that a lot of people don't like a lot of people actually really do like crafted stories and which is the game actually does have so anyway that was a good victory to us but again it was uh, the the good victory came about because uh we were using the um uh what was it the uh like the flanking and and the sort of like the extra bits and pieces now both of these guys have leveled up which is good that was ended up being a, her a heroic victory so we managed through the use of our flanking and also with the use of the um, of that waterway to be able to then get and get a heroic victory rather than just a decisive victory and so when we do the level ups this is pretty cool the way it works we have like random things this reminds me a little bit of like eador and so you've got uh, this one here is healing. We get extra regeneration per day or melee damage. I think we'll take the extra extra one melee damage. That one's now a level two. I'll close that one off, this one in here. And this one here, we've got like extra plus five health or one plus one melee damage. Let's get the extra health in this case. So I'll boost that one up. So we've now got up to 60 health. Close that one. Again, I, I like the balance of this. It's, it's not... It's not crazy like the way it sort of does work. It's um, uh, it it does sort of just uh, like it's it's subtle changes when you do get the level ups, but they they do have a bearing. Uh, some legit spoon is saying, is that a licensing issue? I, I don't know. Uh, I do not know the series. So do they buy into Spellforce and have to use a fixed map? No, they, they, it's sort of funny. The um, I've done an introduction to when I do this for YouTube, where I go through the history of um, of the Spellforce. Um, uh, law, you know, like basically where it all comes from, and so it's part of the Spellforce law. It sits into it, but it's it's not the overall map. It's a small portion of um, of the overall map. Like for example, if we were, if you were playing uh, on the on, if if EO was Earth, and uh, and we were playing the game on a on a game that said the conquest of Earth, uh, the game itself or this this particular portion of the game and I'm thinking that they've called it the conquest of EO so they can bring other uh, DLC into the game or other, even other games as well coming into it under that same banner because you're only playing in a small portion you're, you're essentially playing like in one country it would almost be sort of like saying okay conquest of earth but the whole game is going to be taking place in Germany and that would be so the map would be sort of like Germany where you've got like um, you, know, you might have mountains in one area, forests in another area, swamps in another area, whatever it might actually be. Yet, so the map itself is not EO. It's it's a, a place called Highmark, which is just a small portion of the main uh, continent. So it's actually not really. A, I think using that analogy of this, like this conquest of EO, is taking place in a, in a. A map of you know Germany, if you're considering it in in context of the Earth, that sort of would be a, a better analogy, I think. Now, from this particular attack, we did actually gain some remains. Uh, we've got an undiscovered faction into, into there. We've got like two two sort of knowledge points in through there. I'm guessing that's how you'd call it. I'll just go continue. So the quiet camp uh, is littered with goblin corpses. They were carrying and using some of your master's tools as well as a small amount of coin. So we also picked up some uh, some fin and beer. Uh, we picked up a couple of glyphs, actually. We've got a, a, a lesser glyph of Owl, uh, which, and we also have a lesser glyph of Bowman. So we've got, like, a, it's going to give, like, plus two uh, missile damage in through here. Uh, we also picked up ten gold. So where are the rest of his possessions? So as you turn to leave, a few goblins emerge from hiding behind one of the dirty tents, one of them wearing a hood made of a torn silken cloth, waves excitedly at you. You, I remembers you, one of your of one of Master's pupils. Yes, yes, uh, we serves Master, not like these uh, 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 ch Chagrak here. He spits at the dead goblins emphatically, bowing. He adds, um, "We serves you now. Yes, yes, you give us shiny. We fights for you. Shows you where uh, where more Master's things actually is. And so show me then." 
And so the goblin points to two stacks of chests and sacks not far from where you stand. Let's click those. So that's the next part of the quest. Uh, so it's not really a big part of the actual quest itself, but this is still just introducing the game to you. Now we've got this goblin camp, we can now start to recruit and hire from here if we wanted to. Now, at the moment, we don't actually have any extra gold, so I don't really want to do that. But I can get like archers, I can get goblin brawlers or, or goblin shaman at tier 2. And so this is just like a goblin camp. Um, again, I like that we've got the ability to add to our armies like this, which is quite cool. Um, now, just reading a bit more... Um, so Xander Kappa is saying, a bit off topic, for Dwarf Fortress, is there a way to make the map wider? I changed the Embark to 6x4, but I don't think it would be enough space. I'm attempting to create more here. I'm not sure, sorry, it's one of those things where um, you may be able to mod it in, but I'm not sure. Uh, so Mamman is saying there are five different maps, so still can play it like five times. No, there's one map, five different starts on the same map. So that's my understanding. I, I sort of had a bit of a look around. Um, so any any skirmish or random maps? No, it's just purely the um, the map of Highmark, and so Highmark is the essentially is the region of the world that we're playing in, and the map is always just starting somewhere in Highmark. Um, I don't know if I've got an easy way to show that. I, I did it in YouTube because I wanted to give that context. It's uh, it, I, again, I think if it's an analogy like Germany, it would be sort of saying, okay, look, we're starting. In, the, in sort of like the mountainous region of Germany, whereas we could start like near the Rhine or we could start, you know, on the like up near the ocean, whatever else it might actually be. So it's just one big map. It's just where you're sort of starting, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it's not five different maps. It's five different starting locations on one map. So, um, so yeah, and you, but yes, you can play it like five times because each of those locations does have different parameters within the region that they're in, the, the sub-region. So I won't hire anything simply because I don't actually have any gold yet. So we'll get our gold under control and then we'll sort of start to get more units. Um, okay, now we may still have to get units anyway, but um, the, we will actually have, like part of the story, like spoiler, spoiler, <laughs> part of the story is we get another stack anyway very, very soon that doesn't cost us any more money. Um, right, so with the, the goodies that we actually have, we've got this stack in through here, and we've got the stack in through this side. Now we've run out of movement points, so we'll end our turn in here. Now, you can see there that as, as things develop, we get more and more progression of the tower and also of the quests. So uh, th this will then, it, it, within the next uh, phase, this will then sort of start to explain what's going on through here. So this the Glyph Smithy has been constructed. We started to build that one in the tower. And so the tower is now becoming stronger and stronger. So you wander the old familiar rooms of the tower, lost in memories of your time here as an apprentice. The place was clearly searched uh, through before the goblins ransacked it. Your master's crafting room has been depleted. Most of the other chambers ravaged. Whoever did this left no stone unturned. So we'll go to the library. Now this is again, it's opening up the really the crux of the game. And so this is actually where the where, where the game is controlled and played. So go to the library, and we now actually have a grimoire that's now been added in where we do our research and the spell casting. And this, as I say, is pretty much what then pushes us along with the story. So buried beneath the top of the bookcase in your master's gutted library, you find his old grimoire. Uh, recently you opened the heavy tome. Uh, many of its uh, beautifully illustrated pages have been torn out, but you see bits and pieces of your master's illegible script. He was always secretive about his arcane research, often writing in code. So we're trying to decipher the grimoire. Uh, so you look at the first spells he taught you, carefully flipping the large pages to one of the bookmarked, uh, bookmarks attached on the, to the spine. You can indeed make out some of the basics, others you can almost decipher. This needs further study, you say. And so we did end up getting a couple of 10 extra research points. So you gaze around the room, imagining a treasure trove of arcane knowledge uh, hidden among the, the scattered scrolls and torn books, a lifetime of magical study at your disposal. So I will not leave, uh, I, will not, uh, I will not leave until I've uh, recovered my master's knowledge. And so this is the game, guys. This is the game. So we've now introduced a few, all the concepts have now been introduced to us um, to a degree. The grimoire is now flashing. This is something we can then go and make use of. So if we open this one up, what we actually have through here is different quests. Now the first one that just disappeared and then this one came up was, the, was to build 
the first thing we had to do was to build the um, it was to build the the glyph um, the glyph portion where we can uh, like the, this artificing area the glyph smithy and so once that's been built we then actually have another quest so we have the side quests and things like this will then appear on this particular page and so this essentially is our artifice spell page and through here where we start to build things up what we have to do to sort of progress the story now is to uh, is to craft four glyphs or artifacts when we've done that will then be presented with the next little portion we have to then go and do. And so that's the thing we have to now sort of start to focus on. Um, just reading a few more of the comments there. Um, so uh, Cranston saying, good uh, good day, how is the game? It's good, it's it's not great, but it's good. In my opinion, uh, I don't particularly like uh, preset maps. So um, so from that one, it's uh, that's the only thing I don't love about the game, but everything else I do really quite like. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so Mad Men is saying more games should have alchemy. Uh, really adds to the combat. Yeah, it's it's um, the game is interesting. Like you, there are a lot of different ways to play it, so you can play it different ways. It's, if it is just the the preset map, I guess is the one sort of sticking point for me. Hi-Fi Panda is saying, by any chance, do you know how many uh, creatures the Necromancer can make? No, I don't know the specifics. I've only been I've been playing a lot of it, but only enough just to get a feel for it, if that makes sense. So I've sort of been playing it and then restarting, playing it, restarting it, and just sort of seeing how much changes, what stays the same, uh, where things actually all are. So just so I've got a bit of a feel for it. So I haven't, I've played also on very easy mode, so I can just run around the map and sort of see where, what's where, just to get a feel for the scope of the game. Um, anyway, we have to craft four glyphs. We also have different pages in through here as well. Now, the way it works with the pages, this is actually how we set the game up. So we've got the Artifice spell page in through here. We've got the Apprentice spell page in through this side, which is sort of like a, a global... Uh, this doesn't change. In fact, I'll click on these as we go through. This one allows us to then start different research in a, in a controlled way, like or in a way that will always be here. So we do start off with Corrode, so turn metal brittle and rusty, weakening its structure. So we can actually make use of this one if we wanted to. So we can corrode the armor of all units in a targeted stack, lowering their physical defense. So we can, if we have a stack that's a bit too much for us, we can actually reduce their armor with this particular spell. And so that would then become a, a spell, a, a, like a, a spell that we would then s select. Uh, and we can then do research. So we've got aid down through here. So battle-worn troops feel a warm embrace as their master focuses restorative powers at their location. So these aren't really tied to magic as such. These are just general spells that we can then sort of go and do. We also have this wisp as well. Uh, we then actually have two for our primary. So the primary spell pages, spell pages in through here. We actually have um, one through this side. This is the Earth Master, and this is the second page of Earth Master. These are spells that we don't know yet. And so over time, we sort of, we research these and get clues as to what they actually are. So this is the grimoire of the, of the, uh, of the leader. So if we had have chosen a different primary and secondary spell, that would then sort of show up in through here. So having a nose for precious metals has always been a sought after blessing. This grants you rare sense of temporarily revealing any untapped gold nearby. And so this is, uh, this will ultimately be quite useful to us, but because I know the progression of the game, <laughs> we're not going to do that one. And then finally, we've got the Guardian spell page where we don't actually have any spells available to us just yet. This is our secondary. Uh, back over through here, we have the room blueprints. And so as we go through the game, we can then start to unlock different things depending on what we do. And so these are like quests as well. So free the Western Citadel from the new purity, Purity's Grasp. When we do that, we get, we get a new room. Stop the, stop, the, stop the plague threatening the fields of gold. Do that when we get a new room, etc., etc., etc. There's all these different sorts of, I guess, uh, rewards where we get rooms for our tower based on those. Anyway, let's just go back into here. The one thing we want to do initially is summon Enchanted Wisp. And so Wisps are eth ethereal creatures of pure magic that can meld into the All Fire source. And so we need All Fire, this one up through here, to then start to get like different sorts of magical income. Um, so we'll start that research. And that, again, like, would you ever do anything else? Probably not. Like, it's it will always be the way that you do it. And again, I don't like that. That's always what you do because the map is always the same. Um, now, where are we? Where are we? Where are we with the comments? Um, so, Cranston Science saying, I have to say, I bought the game yesterday. Uh, first time I, I beat you there. <laughs> 
So, uh, well, I've had the game for a good week. I just haven't actually put the put the stuff out. Um, right now, I have 20% discount on Steam, says uh, uh, NeuroTerran. Oh, that's cool. Okay. And on GOG, says Hi-Fi Panda. Okay. So that's going to be our research. Now, I'm not going to bother with Corrode because we, we don't really sort of know of anything that we have to worry about. I can also just step through the pages here as well of the Grimoire. But it's uh, this is the game. This is actually what we need to do. We just close this one off. Uh, so this is now pretty much the setup of what we actually have. Back over through here, we have different things we can then go and do. And so these are where we then go and hire the units again. And this is where we go and do the crafting. And so we need to get four glyphs or four artifacts. Now we do actually already have a couple of artifacts, sorry, a couple of glyphs have been created already, uh, which I don't, like the bowman, and this one here is the XP bonus. I don't really want to use them just yet. But to create like a, uh, an actual glyph, we need to use an ore. And we've only got like the one mountain copper. So I'm just going to drag that into there. And then the way this one works is that we, we it's a, a bit of trial and error, but essentially we've got different thresholds. And the more thresholds we add in, like we've got elemental, death, which is sort of purple, or life, which is like gold, or blue, which is arcane. And so you can see through here that we've got like, for example, um, like these ash, for example, are two, um, two of the elemental. The, the ore that we placed here was also just one elemental. And so we can actually just go through and actually add things in. For example, this is only one of the, um, one of the uh, arcane, this, um, this one is one death. So if we're going to, but we, to get anything to happen, we need to put at least three in. So if I go, I've got one there from this one. I can then go and place two of these in, and so and so we end up getting one or one of the thresholds, which then allows us to then go and get a um, a lesser glyph, a fire wielder. Now I, I've still got one more spot there, so I could actually go and grab this lesser glyph, a bowman, and just see what actually happens. That will then give us two, and so if I go and drag that one into there that's uh, elemental, it's still, it's still not changing anything. We're not getting anything extra, so we don't get anything, any bonus from that one. What about, um, if I just right click, I can get rid of it. I, this is it's just all experimentation. This one then gives us arcane. Uh, we have, this one is the, um, the lesser glyph of owl. By using this and this, we then get a lesser glyph of despair. It's still not really worth doing that one with. I can't get to the thresholds with the others, so this is about as good as we're going to get. So let's just go and get this result. Uh, two turns to craft that one. And so that's now crafting away for two turns. So we'll exit out of that one. Okay, so that's sort of, um, that's really is the crux of the, uh, of the game. I don't think much else gets added into here now. Uh, but we'll just keep on sort of playing along. So we now go and pick up this piece of goodies. We've got uh, just gold in through there. It's actually more the, re the ingredients that we'd be wanting to get. Now we have to be a bit careful. There are different things like this camp, which we can't see just yet. Now these can be randomly placed. Here we go. We've got ourselves a, um, a mountain copper vein in through here. This is a mineable location. Now we will eventually be wanting to go that way. Let's just move up a little bit. Yeah, that's that's got uh, three units in through there. We've got two of the um, the Dwarven workers working away. They throw hammers, <coughs> which do a reasonable amount of damage at five range. I'll close that one off. And another one of the, uh, the, the ones that throw the torches at us before as well. We'll just close them off. Um, we'll just go and get this. These are research books. So we've got more research. And we'll start to move away. Now that's protecting that location. Some of the locations, now this one here is a, like a treasure location, a camp, um, unexplored location. Explore this site for food and, and uh, uh, potions. Uh, so it's not part of our territory. We're not gonna, we could get gold there all the time. I probably should have gone and had a look at that one. We might sort of move back. But the game is, is very much about exploring and just sort of seeing how you go. Just end our turn. These are randomly positioned. Oh, they have come after us. Now, we've got 174 against 152. So they did actually leave that spot and come after us, unfortunately. So um, I'm going to go, and it's saying heroic victory for us. So we could actually just go and just do an auto-resolve if we wanted to. 
Um, I think I'll still just show you the way the game works. Again, I would love to just have a replay in through here. Um, so half I Panda saying blue border on this part of the map is a mistake. I'm not sure what you mean with that, sorry. Uh, so uh, Cordy's is saying, how replayable is a game knowing that the maps aren't random? Seems like it might not be very sandbox-like. It's not sandbox at all in that sort of sense. You can play your own way, but not really. Like in reality, you're going to be pushed along a, um, a, a narrative storyline, uh, I, I find anyway, because you, you, you do want to progress. But you can progress slowly or, or quickly, whichever way you want to go. And, you know, probably slowly is going to be a bit, bit safer. Now we've got a, um, they're coming through this side, but the, the maps, these tactical maps are fantastic. God, I wish this game actually really did have a, um, a way of, um, of, of being able to be played with the, uh, like with, ra with a, an actual, pr uh, random map itself. Now we've got, um, two choke points. They do 14 physical. In the end, we have to close the gap. So if we have a bit of a look, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So three, four, five. They can start to throw from there. One, two, three, four, five. They can throw from there as well. Let's just stay up where we are. And we'll wait for them to hit these choke points, and then we'll go after them. So once they come out in, into this choke point, we should then, like, unfortunately, they're all ranged units, so we do have a bit of a concern with that. Um, let me move this one down, and we've got minimal attacks there. Yeah, you can see there, this is interesting as well. Like, we've got a, a sight penalty that actually happens there, and a sight penalty that happens there. So we, we're getting... Uh, we're getting less, a lot less attacks coming back into this one. Resistant uh, versus damage type. I think we'll just go back in this case and uh, just leave that one where that is. We'll just leave everyone where they are. And again, they're going to have the same problem from, uh, that we actually had, but that's that was a bad one. We've now become disordered. Now, I don't get a flanking shot in through there um, or there. There's a bit of a retaliation that does come back. Let's uh, hit this one. It's very functional with things like, actually that one was disordered and I don't know if it still is. No, it's the because of the damage we just did. This one's no longer ex ex expendable, but it's sorry, it's no longer damaged, but it is um, it is quite it's risky with what's actually happened in through there. Um, let's go for it. Didn't quite get the kill. Now, if I move this one up. The big damage was actually done by these guys, sorry, by this guy here. So I can get the kill. I'll take it. So these are now all confident. Uh, can't do anything else. That's okay. And again, this is okay for me as well. Now the game has also got, it's very much like uh, in Age of Wonders where you do actually have zones of control, so I can't really move these out of the way. This one will kill it, and that one will kill it. Now this one I can go back and get a flanking shot. So I'll take this one even though we're going to be down to very, very low hit points. Down to two, yeah, that's good. Now, we want to go and um, do one shot on this one here. Like, I, I could come back in, but I'm not going to do enough damage. I'm going to swing this one, one around. Ah, oh, damn it, it's not going to work. Why is that? 
again, this is where I would, I'm probably going to have to, I think we'll be okay with this one. I'll just go and do the, the damage. I should have actually given him orders to attack. Actually, we got the kill there. Okay, so we did it. Did it well. We've now lost a lot of hit points, though, but we did actually get there. So it wasn't uh, wasn't as easy as it should have been. Oh, sorry. The uh, so the the domain border and it's hardly visible on that snowy area. Yeah, I think he gets to get used to it because it doesn't change much. I mean, he does change eventually. These are both leveled up again. So we've now got like armor or uh, willpower. Now the armor we have is just eight, so that's going to be good, I think. So we'll grab that one. Uh, we'll close that and this one as well. We've got uh, melee damage or backstab. Now backstab is going to be plus six damage on flanking attacks, and I do want to be using those, so we'll get the backstab. Now these are quite badly off health wise so we have to be very very careful of them now uh, we'll just go continue so it was a hero her an heroic victory okay so we've now got the, the wisp that we can now summon now i think we have to go over there ultimately with the wisp thanks for the subscription there voodoo dog exploring the treasure you find uh yet more gold so we've now looted everything else we had. I might just go back, because they're so bad with their health, let's just go back in and just wait until we get our health. Uh, there's no screaming rush to do things in the game. Um, yeah, so this uh, that's the blue border there that you're talking about, I guess, in the, in the snow. Um, so uh, QTMK is saying, have you found a, uh, any difficulty with the, the key mapping? I have not found a way yet to change key bindings. I haven't tried to, to be honest, in the game, so I'm not sure. So research. Okay, so we've now got the Wisp, so we can bring the Wisp in. Now, we're going to be wanting to do this one. This one's going to cost me one per turn, but 18. I might wait until we need it. We're going to need it fairly soon. Now, Battle-Worn Trips, this will then allow us to, uh, to uh, get up a bit better. I might go back to Aid to start that research that now that's in progress and if we go back to the uh, artifice page we have still haven't got this one we've still got one more turn and then this will start to then sort of this counter will then start to go through as well but we do need to start mining um currently researching aid that's all good in our turn Okay, so what are your next steps? The destruction of your master's tower must mean the uncovered. Uh, the, he uncovered something of the uh, all fire secrets, which the circle guards fiercely. The circle is a group of other um, mages that are on your on the world as well. Again, they're not random either. They just uh, they always start where they start. Uh, you can restore the content uh, the contents of his grimoire, but his tower needs rebuilding too. And if the circle is behind this disappearance, you must expect them to come for you as well. Maybe they know of your discovery already. I'll not let them stop me, or what exactly is the circle? We can sort of find it information. I'll just skip past that, but that is like a, a circle of mages. Uh, so taking proper stock of your master's laboratory, you find very little, uh, very little more than empty vials and containers that have, like everything else, been searched uh, through. Uh, it was certainly not the work of goblins. You can uh, make out tracks of a cart leading to a nearby hamlet. You pass on your way here. Did the villagers plunder the tower after it was abandoned too? And so I suppose I should check in with them, them as well. So we can go and we start to, this is again always the same, but in a different location. So it just is, uh, it's with, always, within, always within your borders. There it is there to the hamlet. Again, we're sort of seeing like it's a uh, part of the main quest. Now we'll go there, even though we've got like one unit that's not really ready for it yet. We've got up to 65 gold. Now in this one here, when we go and do this part of the quest, uh, we will then get an extra gold. So let's go and start to bring in one of the archers. We'll hire that one. This one here is going to cost me two gold per turn. This is just one gold per turn. And so we'll hire that. That one then goes into there. Three turns to get that one. We'll close that one off. But we have to be careful of our gold. We don't want to be running out of gold or mana. Um, so we might as well go to the hamlet and just... We, there's different ways, again, that we can play these. 
So we'll, um, the village inhabitants eye you with an air of hostility when you arrive. Children are called inside. Some of the villagers arm, uh, arm themselves with tools and sticks. Your band uh, regards them curiously in return. A burly black-haired man uh, brandishing a, uh, a cudgel steps forward and says, there's nothing for you here. Uh, you can scare them into submission. You can show them you mean no harm or ask them why they're so hostile. I think we'll just show them we mean no harm. The villagers barely budge, uh, but after a moment, one of the elders steps forward hesitantly. Uh, you were afraid you, you would, uh, we were afraid you would bewitch us. The old wizard's apprentice uh, thought they could come here, uh, come after him and take back the items he gave us. We wanted to trade them in the city to buy clothes for our children. Um, so I can either do, I don't care, they belong to me right now. I don't want to be going into a fight with this unit. I have no intention of harming you. Let's trade or return the goods, pay a fine. We'll call that even. Let's do this one here. We'll do the trade. Uh, trade, but you, uh, but you, we trade. The elder stares at you, slow to collect himself and call out to his people. The major's troops um, are here to trade. All those around you begin to relax. He leans on uh, in to uh, squint at you. You're not playing a cruel trick on us. You really are. You wish to trade for goods. Um, so we can again, we can step backwards, or we can go yes, trade. We'll do that one. And so it's it's just uh, we humbly apologise for our behaviour. Now that uh, what uh, would what would you uh, wish to trade for the goods? So we can do. Five gold. Uh, I can pay you for uh, for gold for a few ingredients or five mana. I can uh, perform some cantrips for a few ingredients, or I don't have any means to pay you. Let's just use the gold. And so we picked up a fair bit of stuff. And so the the villagers uh, gladly accept the coin you gave them for their wares, and uh, but seem happy t uh, for you to leave. So we've got like another a lesser glyph of herbalist. So we can now harvest plants. This is actually going to be useful. And uh, we've then got the heat stone back into here as well. That's going to give us uh, a f like two life and one uh, elemental. Uh, three mountain copper, so we can start to do more, more of the stuff. We've got sky iron as well. Uh, wheat, uh, rations. Uh, we, we paid gold and we've got uh, extra points. I don't actually know what this undiscovered faction is with the plus 20, but anyway, pleasure doing business. And so I see we. Uh, I will see if we can find out more. So you leave, uh, but sorry, as you leave, you think about the apprentice the villagers was kept speaking of. Perhaps you can find them. Uh, they may be able to shed some light on your master's fate. This is the next step in the game. So again, it's always the same progression, which as I say, I wish it, I wish it wasn't, but that's the way it is. Now artificing back and through here, we've now got a few more things we can now place in here. So if we use the uh, sky iron. Do we have blues, like two more blues that we can put into that one? And we don't really. We do actually have a good luck charm, which has got one blue and one one life. Uh, we've got one more blue there. And that's it. Hang on, that sort of does it, doesn't it? Yeah, that gives us three arcane. Let's try that and see what actually happens. So we put the ore in there. Then we'll put the fin and beer yeah, we don't need any more than them. Let's put a fin and beer in through there. That gets us to two. That one then takes us to three. And we then get the um, the greater glyph of seer. And so what this one then does is it um, gives plus two focus. So that one would be not too bad. Now we can also get life if we place that one in there. This is the greater glyph of pathfinder. So forest guide, this unit and every ally on its stack gains ignore movement penalties for forests. So we can move through forests quickly if we went with that one through there. If we ditch that one there completely and ditch that one there completely, but that's a bit of a waste to do that one the whole way through. Actually, well, I can sort of, yeah, probably, I probably would go back to Mountain Copper in this case and then look at, um, at trying to get uh, life. So if we, oh, hang on, where's oh, that one's still there? That one, so we've still got this one in here. We're at two elemental, two life. If I go with one more elemental, which is um, if I put one of these in here, so we've got the fire wielder that takes us to that one. If we then go and get one more life, if we take the wheat, for example, and put that into there, sorry, wrong one, into there. Uh, we've got the Lesser Glyph of Mountain Goat, which gives us the ability to mine. So mine a mineable location on the world map to gather ore. Uh, having several units with this ability, it decreases t the time required. That's actually not bad. Now, I think that that's purely just the life anyway. So if we take out, the, uh, take out that one, 
I just right click on that one, no, it's healthy. So it is both, it does require both. Well, why not? Let's do that. Um, yeah, let's just go and do that. This will be useful. So we'll craft that one. Now we did waste two of our, like we've still got two there, so we can still finish off the quest that we actually have. It's gonna be four turns to get this particular one, but we're um, getting a, a more powerful way of sort of then moving forward. Uh, you can see there with the extra slot that we actually have in through here as well, we can now just go across and pick up a second one of these if we wanted to. We're getting plus one now from the village, but that plus one is then gonna be taken up by the time we finish off getting this unit in here. So we'll go back. Um, we can sort of scout up a little bit. I do want to go up this way just a little bit. Let's just not, not go too crazy. Yep, that's getting too crazy. So I don't want to be triggering these. So we've got ourselves some lesser ice golems. So we'll um, just move back. They, they're, sort of, they, they're sort of always there, but they're also a bit random as well. Uh, let's just leave that one where that is until we actually get the other unit. We'll end the turn. So Bacon Idis is saying dwarves would never combine ore and wheat. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got the select research. So we've now got these at this point in time. Just go across. Earth Law. So this spell uh, will instill a sense of stone and earth equaling the most experience of dwarves or on anyone, making uh, climbing a mountainside feel more like a mere stroll or sniff gold. I think we'll do this one here. Grab that one there. So that's in, in progress. These are slightly random, a little bit like Age of Wonders again. The game is like age, uh, like an old Age of Wonders game, but with, um, with, with a storyline. So, uh, new, we uh, new research, holy weapons are now available. So we've got these as well. So these are now in, in Guardian. That one might be worth getting, actually, as well. I'll go the other way. It's only eight turns. We'll just keep on sort of moving our way through. Yeah, this one still is injured. One more turn and we get the, uh, get the archer. So we'll just go back in, in there and wait. And end our turn. So you have stacks of waiting orders. Yep, we'll force the end of the turn. All right, so um, your master's missive spoke of an all fire source you discovered not far from here. Uh, now that you have established yourself in this tower, it's time to search for it. You eagerly scour his scribblings for any hint of the source's location. It must be close to the tower, else your uh, master would not, not set up uh, his abode here. Eventually, you find the location noted in your master's grimoire. It is not even a day's walk from the tower. How to, how to access the all fire uh, as you may have found out to their detriment no mortal can touch the all fire this is where we use the wisp essentially it's just telling us to use a wisp so let's summon a wisp and try it and the all fire is actually up in here uh, is that it there or there yeah melt with the all fire now there's five units here there's five of the um of the hornets tier one um they've got a melee attack at 18 Physical damage. They've got piercing attacks, so plus six damage against units with armoured. All right, that's um, that should be okay. They've got elemental weakness, so even though there's five of them, we'll have like a group of five or four for us. Now this this area through here as well. This is a ritual altar. Um. Oh, okay, Sapio was saying, can you show how to use the runes? Yes, okay, we want to do that now anyway, actually, because uh, if we go back into our units, so these guys in here are um, are going to be our archers, so this, I mean, these are the, the ranged attack, and so hopefully these can stay alive. But what I can do is I can just go into the glyph slots and say, okay, which of the glyphs do we want to be placing in here? So we've got, like, the glyph of the bowman. So we get plus two extra missile damage, so I'm going to go and throw that glyph into that location. This one here is the... Um, we have the herbalist as well, so harvest a, her a harvestable location on the world map. I might put both of those on that unit, 
this is the owl. We get experience bonus, which we don't want to use on this particular uh, this particular one. And the um, lesser glyph of uh, fire wielder. Actually, I probably don't really want to be putting these on these guys, to be honest. Um, In one sense, the fire wielder would be, would be best used on our on our fire thrower. It's a bonus when attacking uh, enemies inflicted with burning. That would actually just so let's close that one off. I'm thinking we're ultimately going to get better archer type units. So if we go back across and um, close that one and go back into here, so this one does have a ranged attack. So we've got missile damage in through there. I'm pretty sure that would work out okay. If we uh, if once we put them in here, we can replace them, but it destroys the glyph. Yeah, fireball. It is missile. It's saying fireball is missile. So if we use the plus two missile in through here, so we'll place that one there, and we'll also go and place the um, the fire wielder there as well. <clears throat> so now we're going to have like a little bit extra. Um, get fireball to do 22 elemental damage. Well, hopefully that. Hope I haven't wasted that. I think I may have. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I didn't check to see what they actually were. Anyway, we do actually have those abilities. Um, yeah, and the world skill we have is to, for this one can mine ore. We'll close that one off. All right, so we'll start to move these ones up. Um, they're all now at full strength. So move them up and we can take this one on. What I'll do as well, I'll, I'll just bring the wisp in at this point in time. So summon that wisp. I think we'll take this one on now. I'm pretty sure that we're okay. Let's, let's give it a go. Hi, Biff Gimble. How are you going? And Engineer Kenny saying, Hi, Dad. So I was wondering if, uh, if there was an included tutorial with this game. It just basically presents the story, but it does it every single time. <laughs> I wish there was a way to sort of skip past all of this sort of stuff and just get straight into the actual game itself. But you, the, the tutorial is the game itself. Uh, so approaching the all fires uh, node's location, you find it buzzing with activity. A, a, a form of insects has taken hold of it, no doubt attracted by the place's alluring energy. So we can either kill the pests, which are, they've got a 205, or we'll come back with more troops. In this case, we don't really have... Yeah, it's a, it's a bit 50-50, this one. We do have the ability... It's where I think we might come back with more troops. And there's nothing we can do here until we actually have this inside our territory. Just end our turn. And we should have another story coming any, any second now. Now, if I could go and place... Uh, do I want this one to be a... Let's just go and let's go and place this one here where we can do the harvesting. It's the owl, the herbalist. Let's do that. Well, while we wait for the uh, game pro to progress, we'll uh, just come in and start to harvest. Now that we've got this one with the harvesting ability, we can then just start to harvest that particular location and get some more some more goodies. Got one more turn for the for the glyph in through here. We'll end the turn. And so this is very much like Heroes of Might and Magic, where you've got like uh, the week of Shana. So Sh and this is gen this is uh, random. So Shana, gentle guardian of the suffering, grants her healing touch to all of the owner's creatures. Uh, faction promotions: all of the units have what, plus one hundred percent daily regeneration. Uh, cities and shops have have new inventory. Well, we don't have any cities or shops. So just go continue. Yeah, in the next story. Okay, here we go. So this is the next part of the story. So not far from your tower, you spot a hooded figure watching you from a, cr a crop of trees. Is the circle already aware of your presence here? Danger may be closer than you expected. I need more guards. And so you know the local militia holds a watchtower not far away. Perhaps you can acquire help there. 
Let's talk to them. And so we've got a militia outpost in through this side. Now you'll see that this is not part of the main story quest. It's not going to get in the way of what we're doing. So we'll just sort of we'll wait until we actually spend the three turns in here. We do actually have the wisp, but we can't do much with that one. So I'll leave that one just sitting there for now. Um, yep, and we've done the lesser the glyph of mountain goats. So let's go and cross. And what what else have we got? It's not going to quite work. We need more ingredients, so let's just wait until we get more ingredients from here, and then we can start to do more crafting. So the crafting is important. So we've got to do this sort of quest, but there's no rush. There's no sort of screaming rush to do these. That's the main main quest that we have to do back up through that side. Okay, so. Um, Actually, this is the next part that I was waiting for as well. So late at night, a frantic rattling at the door wakes you up. Uh, from your window, you see a hooded figure nervously eyeing the path leading up to your tower. Spotting you, they frantically wave and shout, Quick, open up in the name of our master. They are after me. So we can either survey the area for any pursuers or open the door. I know what this is. Open the door. <laughs> After quickly sliding through the doorway and locking the door behind you, a man slumps against the wall and, and breathes. I pray you've not spotted my trail or we may be all be lost. Uh, slowly catching his breath, he pulls down his hood. He is older than you thought, his beard already graying. Apologies, uh, where are my manners, he mumbles. I know who you are. Our master spoke very highly of you, but no doubt you wonder who I am, indeed. Uh, so I am Florian Ironbend. I, I, studied, I studied to become a, an earth master with our late master, he, he says proudly. Here's proof of my work with him. He hands you a number of densely scribbled pages. They revolve around making, uh, around working with various ores and metals and are marked several times by your master's hand. So tell me what happened to our master. I must say it's quite the tale. He takes a seat at the small table near the tower entrance. Do you want me to tell you everything or just what has happened to our master's research after the circle came for him? Uh, we'll skip to the end if you don't if you don't mind. Uh, so a day's, a day's journey from here, not far away, is the tower of the Circle's forces um, have used uh, uh, have long used as a base. I'm certain that it is where they took the pages with our master's most valuable research. I managed to uh, gather some of our master's former servants, but our forces were not sufficient to take on the uh, Circle's minions. I implore you, please help me protect our master's legacy. I swear I will not fail him again. I will even offer you my services if you uh, if you help me to retake his research. Please, together we can uh, we we may best the circle's forces. Our master's work must be preserved. So again, um, we can sort of be sneaky. Uh, this will end this adventure, or basically this will end the adventure by agreeing. And so if we agree to this one, he will then help us, which is good. We get a lot of different units. And this is the, where the stolen pages are. And you can see there, there's now a, uh, an overlap of the circle's influence on this, in this region in here. And so um, this is conflicted. So we, um, we, I think we can still use it, but it is sort of like now in between. Now there's a wandering stack. We're gonna get a few of these wandering stacks coming through. These are fairly strong, but we now actually have a group that is um, inside the tower with this new apprentice. And we actually have one more slot available. And so we do actually have him. And if we have a bit of a look at him, he's, um, we can actually put things, for example, like uh, artifact slots in him. We've got the armor slot, and we also have like a trinket slot. So we've got different different ways of leveling him up or, or improving him over time. And so again, there'll be a high degree of randomization that can now sort of occur. This is probably the most interesting part of this. Um, so we'll just, have a quick, we'll just quickly go through these ones. You've got Stone Fist, which is melee. Uh, so what's this one here? Uh, no, that's sorry, that's a arranged arranged area. Twenty four physical damage at the enemy. This is where I was half thinking I should have kept the Bowman one back. Uh, we've got Mountain Goat. We've got Owl. Now I'm going to get the experience for him. So we'll put the Owl one on him, and we'll we'll then just wait until we get some other ones. Now the Mountain Goat one is another one. He's got Build Lodge as his world skill. But I wouldn't mind him also being able to then go and mine mining locations. But let's just leave it for now and we'll wait and see until we, we find other things. But getting the ex extra experience in there will, will be useful. So we'll close that one off. Still don't have the extra gold. <clears throat> so, but we do actually, if we take this one, we th then we'll get it. This is a militia outpost. Uh, so let's go and have a look at this one. And... Um, 
it's not one of ours, but we can sort of go in. So um, some soldiers loiter in front of the watchtower, but there is, isn't even a proper guard posted here. At the sight of your approach, a few of them do get up, unsure on their, uh, unsure on their feet, and obviously more, uh, more than just a little drunk. So we can actually offer five gold to, for them to join our ranks, admonish them for their dereliction of duty, or five mana, impress them with magic. I think we'll just offer them gold again. So a bearded man uh, in a dented breastplate scratches his head. I don't know, we have pretty good life out here. So we have to sort of raise that again. So we'll actually just go and offer them more gold. And we get ourselves like a, uh, a mole rider unit and we at the cost of 10 gold. But this is strong. And so we now have a strong unit in through here. The leader looks greedy really, at the bags of coins. I guess you have enough uh, to make it worth our while. He replies, the soldiers start picking their gear. Lead, uh, lead away, mage, we will follow. Excellent. So we now have a, uh, a high level um, cavalry unit. So that's always worth doing. It also then gives us two extra gold. Uh, so we should have extra gold coming in and extra research as well. Now back over through here, we have now a few extra little things we can do. Uh, we've now got the all fire flow. And this is sort of like a little bit of one of those things where we can sort of pick and choose how much we put into research, proficiency or mana. Um, if we do, actually I'll probably end up doing, um, I'll come back a little bit. The, the mastery is, or proficiency, actually maybe not. Let's just leave it five and five at this stage. So just leave it back there. So that's how you then control the all fire as it comes back in. Now we're going to get more all fire coming in fairly soon. Uh, this one here, we can now go and build another room. So um, next level of the of this is at level 10. So once we get this uh, the uh, tower to level 10, the domain radius goes up, the apprentice slots goes up by one, and the tower rooms goes up by three. And so we just keep on sort of building away. Uh, in this case, we can either spend gold for the workshop, so tools, devices, and containers to facilitate magical crafting of any kind. It's going to give us uh, plus three gold per day as well. Uh, and this one here, we're getting plus five right research. Now, gold has been spending on everything. So I think we'll go with the research. It's going to cost me 45. I don't have much left. Again, I can't afford to really put any extra units in anywhere. Let's go and build this. So now it's under construction for five turns. So we're getting there now. We're on the way. Yeah, so sorry, if we go back there again, the um, there's different things in through here. This is just showing the extent of your domain. So we can end up getting, like the domain radius will then increase, and that will then open up that mine for us. And so there's a whole lot of different things that happen with the tower over time as well. So it's uh, that progression is good. I just wish it was on a random map. <laughs> there's so much to like about this game. Uh, so I'll be back saying mole riders. Yes, um, must be a... a a pretty short unit. Uh, there must be giant moles, I guess. So we've got the uh, we've got our stack in through here now. Now this is a, this is the most we can actually have in this particular stack. What we should now do is is start to send it out to look after or look look for different ways of uh, of it leveling up and getting experience. So uh, the mole riders, what do they do? They've just got melee attack, purely melee. I won't worry about that one for them. Yes, these are dwarves on giant moles. Now, has that one got any units in it? Yeah, it's got four units inside there. We don't know anything about it. Um, four is hard, to be honest. And I sort of, uh, what I might do is I might actually come back and and move these units off and leave this one behind. We're still actually it's only one more turn there, but let's just go and do this. I can go and pick those up and have them come across and join up with this particular group and just leave this one on its own just to harvest uh, then we're going to be wanting to replace probably these three in here really okay they've got one more turn and so we can actually take those in so we've now got our high level units we've got the range unit that's a bit the better range unit uh, coming back in through this side, plus we have our our uh, apprentice. Now I might just do a, a scum save just in case I've screwed this up. So I'm just going to save the game. Yes, in through there. <clears throat> All right, so in we go. Now we're up to three, uh, three. Uh, yeah, this one should should be okay. So we've got a few different types of units in through here now uh, that are coming in, and we have to be careful. 
<clears throat> again, it's one of these things where I would like to, uh, I wish that it did actually have a retry button uh, because the, you know, there, is, there is nuance to the combat. Um, where are we? Sorry, there's, um, I think we're just answering the questions about the tutorial. There's a tutorial section on the main menu uh, where you can choose to start a game. Actually, I can't remember what was in that one, but um, the progression does just ease you in anyway. Anyway, we've got um, fairly strong units in through this side. We'll actually go and start the battle again. Now, we don't have control of this area, but we will eventually when, when our tower levels up. I do love these ran these maps in here, the, um, the different battle maps. They're good. Got a choke point through there, which is good. Now, what have we got? We've got Dwarven workers, which have they've got the throw hammer, which is reasonably powerful. More workers, sentries, crossbow does a lot of damage. They can stagger units as well. And then we've got the axe wielders. That's just a purely a melee attack. See how many of these shots do they get? Crossbow, five range. It's only one action, so they only get one shot of these. So that means that it's not going to matter if they move up; they're going to be able to shoot no matter where they are. Um, so start to move these up. Just getting around the corner so that they can't easily get to us initially. different things we can do like stone fist deals 24 physical damage to an enemy we've got um, uh, summon barrier create an earth barrier in position in five range uh, that's going to cost me two focus I'm going to leave this one off to the side It's going to help us a little bit. Yeah, they're spreading out their um, what they can do. And they did stagger that one and do, did a fair bit of damage. This is where I probably will be safe scumming anyway, I would guess. Um, we can kill that one off. Yes. That one kills that one off. That one kills that one off. If I leave this one in the fight, it's going to die. So pretty much no matter what I do, I'm in trouble here. Um, hmm, what about you? Yeah, you get to kill that one off. allow this one to run I can 
run in. Um, which does give us a shot. Let them get the attack of opportunity. Uh, again, I've screwed up again. Um, move that one away. Oh, hang on, I've still got this guy. We should have gone after that one. So we, I'm thinking we will we'll be loading this one back in again. We'll just end our turn. Oh no, it's, it takes a, a second turn. So there must be a... Um, okay, so... Uh, yeah, it needs to be reloaded after use. Okay, that's that, that didn't have to rush that in that case. So we're actually in a good position here. Yes. Get you to uh, attack this. Hang on, that, that's done. Okay, we got the victory. That's good. No one died, so we don't have to do the save scum. So back in order, saying looks like Warhammer units. Yeah, sorry, I'm missing so many of the comments. By the way. Guys, heroic victory, that's good. And this one did go get a level up. And we picked up two mountain copper. Um, let's go back to the, to the units. So we have uh, speed of extra or um, daily regeneration. Uh, these ones, the speed is going to be useful, so I'll go with the speed because that's the whole idea is to use them in that sort of capacity. Let's go down and do some mining. This is now, at least there's no one protecting this anymore. No, we can't go back. Position that one back there. We do have to protect this. There, there are wandering stacks that do come through. Okay, so harvesting the Dwarven Windweed grants you uh, two extra... Um, uh, weed in through this side um, and uh, some XP. I was just going to continue that one. Now there's another one that was, I uh, thought I saw there another one somewhere there over here. But this wandering stack is going to be attacking us. And so we've got these um, lesser fire golems that we have to sit in, go and deal with. We've got fireball. They're not too damaging for us, to be honest, so it's not too bad. And then they've got one of these um, horned beasts with a fairly strong melee attack. Now, this group, we've got one unit that's now suffered a bit of damage, so we're going to now move that one back out. Oh, sorry, if I, if I right click, it doesn't, no, it doesn't do what Age of Wonders does. But we can take this one on, so let's go and move this one into here. Uh, now, thinking about what we want, need to do in this side. Probably need to get more melee. So I'll just grab one of these. Add that one in. Now we're down to very low uh, gold at this point in time. Uh, we also have, we can sort of go back in and, and do more of the uh, more of the artificing. So we might just quickly do that while we're here. What have we got? We've got one of those, one of those, one of those. Not really enough. No, not really enough. I could use up all of the copper, but I think I'll wait. Now this will spawn every so often until we destroy it. And we want to come back to here as well. So I'll just do another save. There's no quick save in the game, which is sort of funny. I don't think there is from memory. If we do control S. No, it doesn't do it. Okay, so in we go. Now it's a decisive victory, but it's, it still says we could lose some units. They've got a big unit in through here. This one's still taking a bit of damage. Uh, 
we do, there's certain units we don't want to be losing. I don't mind losing this unit here if we have to. So I'll start the battle. And so this start that you're seeing here, no matter what you do, no matter what, where you start in the game, this is sort of what you're always going to get. <laughs> it's, we haven't really had much choice in here just yet. Now, uh, this one here does come through. It's got raw, so minus three willpower to enemy units in the two radius around the user. Um, that's one action. Then it's just got its melee attack. And these guys have got their ranged attack at range 5. So ultimately we do need to spread out a little bit. Sort of draw it in. How far can it get? Can get to there. to there. I don't know if we can use the roar in one in one turn. I'll leave the others back. We are burning. Oh, this one didn't go in. Hmm, okay. You're being a bit clever. forward. Yes. I think they're still burning. Yep. I've got good armor here. I think what I'll do is I'll move this one up. Just see how we go. Yeah, this is interesting. They're really making life hard for us. Yes. Just weaken them down. Move that one in, it's, it sort of starts things happening. Um, let's just see what happens. We can always just save scum it. I think I'll just lock it in. Here's the wall. 
Thanks for the subscription the Sharky Mouth. And we've been routed there. So they're running. Uh, okay, you're saying, uh, missed the first part of the stream. Uh, what's your opinion on this one? Looks good, but was worried about the replayability and the lack of randomness. That's been my, that's my concern with it. That's like there's a real lot to like about what it does do, but there's also a lot, you know, a lot of concerns about it as well. Uh, we've got the flanking shots in through there. Um, can we go that way? I think. So we did just the one. Yes. Yeah, it's sort of it's a it's an interesting game, but it's um, yeah there are some there are some aspects about it that I would I would prefer I wish it did have random maps. I just I think it would be great, but then it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the the game that it actually is if that was the case. Now these here, I think it's going to have to start to do damage here. This thing's going to cause a lot of damage over this other side. Yes, I've, play, I've played this one fairly poorly. this one which we definitely aren't going to let that happen damn it okay well that's um this isn't going to be any good for us So we have played this one too too poorly. Yeah, no, this is not going to work. So um, I think we'll replay this one again and just see if we can play it a, a better way. So I don't know if we can quit out of this. Let's go back to the menu. So yeah, we'll do a save scum on this one. Again, I don't know why the game doesn't actually have a, a the same thing as what Age of Wonders now has to allow save scumming. It should have it, because these battles are intricate. So I'll be back saying, if the, major, if the map is large enough, it'll be fine. It is a big map. It's a very, very large map. All right, in we go again. Um, I'll try this. Oh, by the way, this one can actually put down a lodge just to sort of extend the domain. So if we did want to make sure that we had this, I could actually go and grab that. I might do that, actually, when we, um, when we, when we do this one. So we'll try this one again. Just see if we can actually sort of break through here. <clears throat> so, we'll start the battle again. Now, where we made the mistake last time is it knew to stay back. This is interesting, we've got the water again. Will they all go on one side? Yeah, they have. Okay, this, this guy here is an elemental, so um, we shouldn't have any real issues. Uh, they're going to disorder both of those and just cause us some, some issues. Yeah, I don't know why I can't. Like, it's sort of funny. It wants to go into the front, but I can get a I can get a flanking attack that way. Um,
This is the hard one, I guess. Yes. Let's just move back. flanking shot against that one next turn. Don't mind this one being the target. So we're down a fair way here. Flanking attack there. Has that been dazed? Yep, this, um, this unit's maximum actions are reduced by one. Does not uh, affect unstoppable units, so that's um, that's interesting. So the, these guys actually did a good job there. I keep on feeling to look at this burrow ability that it's got. Um, now I'm going to move this one back in ultimately. But I can now move this one back out. I do get a shot there. I've got one more action. It's got 12 to 18. Um, yes. So we're getting good flanking shots in here as well. So we should be able to bring this thing down now. That one's still, okay, still okay. I don't think this one's burning or anything. Oh, it is burning. Okay, in that case, we're going to have to be a bit careful of it. Yes. Let's get this one to the point where we can get a kill. Yeah, we get get one. It gets one retaliation. So we get the flanking shot there. That's twelve, and then eight, and then we get the kill with this one. All right, so that's good. We've taken this one down. And we've still got, we've still got um, reasonable uh, numbers in through this side. And we've got the weaker units now left, so we'll end our turn there. So Extreme Bunning saying this kind of looks like Age of Wonders. How's the game? Very much like Age of Wonders. It does feel like it to a degree. Of course this one's burning now as well. Two attacks there. We'll do we'll do this one. This one's fairly strong. Age of Wonders is uh, more difficult with the tactical battles, but you know it, it's certainly up there. It's it's interesting the way it does work. Um, yeah, we've got nine. Let's kill one of these off. Killed. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, this is a much better attack than what we did last time. Gonna fire over this obstacle. Yes. <clears throat> You've got a 
a flanking shot through there. So we'll take that. It's now disordered. And we'll kill it off. Great. So we got through that one without any uh, any damage. Without any actual kills or deaths. <clears throat> Right, and three level ups as well, which is good. <clears throat> so these have gone up one level. Um, let's see what they've got. So speed or health, we'll get the extra health. These are now level three. Health again. We'll take the health. And our actual um, Florian has actually now gone up a level as well. So uh, it would be good to start to get some artifacts for him. Uh, so he has got uh, research affinity, so plus two research per day. Uh, harvest plants, so harvest a harvestable location on the world map to gather ingredients. Or healing, plus 100% uh, plus 100 daily regeneration. Now this is not during the battle itself. I'm sort of, yeah, I'm sort of thinking none of them are really what I would want. I'll go with the, har the plant harvesting. So we'll close that one. Okay, that was good. And we picked up a Corrupted Ruby and also a uh, Charged Crystal. Okay, so both of these are going to be useful for us. Um, well, actually with him you now, with, with this skill, he can go and harvest this one. So we'll just do this at this point. Make sure I, once they heal up. Now this one will spawn other, other units every so often. We have to be careful of that. We've still got these as well. Might take that one out of there. That's the one that we want. So we can have two of them harvesting in there. That'll just reduce it slightly. <clears throat> we do want to come across to here as well. Let's bring that one over that way. End our turn. Which I should be uh, doing the glyphs. Now, uh, we've got these here which give us a bit of extra. We've got death and and elemental in that one through there and we've got uh, two of the other if I combine that with the beer right one of those into there we'll just see if we get the same thing that's the lesser seer so we get plus one willpower um Out and go through there. So uh, Killer Volt is saying, uh, "What difficulty are you playing on? Just the balance difficulty, so just the basic one. But we're playing in the uh, in the harder start, like the harder start location. Not the hardest, but uh, one of the harder ones. Uh, so these are the these are the things that we know, the recipes that we actually do that we're aware of so far. Um, let me move that one back." Gets us arcane. It's the fire wielder again. That's despair. So Grant's fearless. Yeah, never become routed. This could be good for our um, for our main. Unit, just on my phone, just beeped. That's okay. Nothing there. Uh, yeah, sorry about this, missing a lot of the comments, guys. If you do want to grab my attention, just do an at dance tactic, and I'll then sort of be able to see it. Um, yes, yeah, so a BLD is saying map is static, but objects on the map are randomised to a degree. Yes, some some aren't, some are. This is a greater glyph. Raining fearless, so immune to fear. Look, let's just do it. 
craft that one, and then we'll put that onto the uh, onto the um, uh, the cavalry unit. This one can then mine this location because this guy here can mine. Select research. Okay, so we just go back in. We've got the earth law. Uh, so sniff gold. Reveal the nearest unknown deposits of uh, metals. If there are none, the spell will fail. Let's go and actually, we've still got this one. We have to get out as well. But let's just start the research back up this way. Then, in this case, although let's do this one here. This dwarven vault. We also have unholy weapons. That's a cheap one, actually. We'll do that one instead. Okay, so new research available yeah, for, for the Dwarven Vault. Still two turns on the workshop. So there's a, there's a degree of, uh, of uh, you know, where you can do your own thing, but it's not complete. So we've got uh, roots in through there, windweed and seeds. Okay, we'll go continue. So we've sort of done everything we can through that side. Now we've got these... Um, I'm happy enough to go after this one up here. Everyone's healed up. Again, we'll just do a um, quick save before we go in. Actually, I wish there was a quick save in the game. Okay, so um, we're going to kill those pests. We're up to 330 there, so we'll, we'll get rid of them now. This is a decisive victory, so we still could take some damage in here. I don't know why that one's flashing red. No, we don't need any of those. That's okay. We'll close that. Okay, here we go. Start the battle. The battles are good, I've got to say. I really do like them a lot. It's uh, got you know just the right amount of interest. Now, this is interesting. See how we're now on a raised area? That's going to be of benefit to us if we can, if we can have our range units on a higher, higher plane than where these guys are coming from. Okay, so we've got the brawlers. Now, these, uh, we do have to be a bit careful of these. Okay, with goblin archers. It was just one off. Yeah, see how the high ground, we're getting extra extra damage done from the high ground, which is good. stop these or not. Okay, we've dazed that one. So we just we don't we just, like we can't attack them anyway because these are flying. So it's just a matter really of uh, of like this one's now got one less action point. Um, they're down to twenty six. We should be able to start to get some uh, yeah, kills pretty much anywhere we, we want. Let's just do the ones on the end. And they've now just been disordered. Yes. Um, this guy's got no problem at all. So I'll just do it from the other the other side. And 
And then we can't target these. Actually, we can target them. Hmm, I didn't think we could. I thought they were flying. Getting confused with Master of Magic. points. Okay, that was nice and easy. Great, okay. Excellent, a couple more level ups. That was nice. Hardly lost any any of what we needed there. So we now just go back in to these archers. We've got um, pack tactics. So for each ally with pack tactics in their stack, this uh, unit gains plus one damage or extra health. I'll grab the extra health. They're not not very healthy. So we'll close that one off and then this one in here. Now we've got uh, willpower plus one. We were going to put fearless on this one anyway. So I don't think willpower is going to be we're not going to matter much about that particular one through there. We've got focus, your resistance against white and death. Actually, that's not bad. That's not bad. The melee damage, though, going up as well. Having the protections against the uh, against the death and um, white and death uh, damage or spells. Hmm. You're just talking about the uh, disordering of the different units there as well. I think we'll go melee. Close that one off. How far is this one now coming along? Still got a little way to go before he gets to the next level. And we picked up uh, translucent silk and fur. Okay, after dispersing the giant insect, you uh, you approach um, you eagerly approach the place where a glow seems to break through the ground, pulsating with promise. Get closer. The all fire draws you, you to it, its power singing to you. As tempting as it is, you know that outside the circle of mages, no one can touch it and survive. If you summon a wisp, you, sh you could meld with the all fire. Yep, I have that in my spell. I have it ready to go. So we just have to place it there. So the wisp is now here. Um, and so the wisp essentially is, uh, it's got mental bolts, so it does white damage has a weak melee attack, so he's not very good at, at, at attacking or anything. But, you know, they're still there. Just uh, close the unit and have it then go up and meld with the actual area. So before you is the glory of the all-fire. Its raw, unbottled energy sings to you, resonating with each fibre of your being. You desire nothing more than to touch it, though you do not will destroy you. The wisp beside you hums slowly, resonating with all-fire too. Um, okay, so let the wisp meld with the, with the no node and then study it. So we'll do that one. Uh, and so we get a little bit of extra research. To hell with the circle, I will conquer the all fire. So essentially there we go. And so that's now going to be melding. Now it's still not actually melding. We just told it to go and do it, but we didn't actually do it. There's a bit of a, a, it's not a bug, but it's a it's a bit of a gotcha. You have to then with the, with the, with the wisp selected, you then have to click on the meld in here and it will then start to meld. So that will then give us an all power boost or an all fire boost. In the meantime, we've still got these guys. So we'll move them back down. Um, let's go over to here. Yeah, we'll see what else there is. Now what we might also then just do is... Um, which one was it? Do a sniff gold. Okay, we've got faction promotions plus five mana per day. This is just for this particular week. Workshop has now been constructed. Let's go and have a look at that. We now have a second slot, which is for. Um, uh, for crafting, so we can craft any two, it's saying here. Actually, that doesn't make sense. Oh, it just means we can do two. Okay, so what have we got? What have we picked up? 
Now we've got uh, these are of, um, seeds are a catalyst. I don't know if we can use them in there though. These are more for the uh, for the um, the one that sort of does the, the potions. But uh, we can certainly use them. Let's go and grab another one of those in there. That's going to be another fire wielder. Um... We've got two deaths. We've got one life. Two life. Uh, sorry, uh, we've got the arcane. If we get rid of one of those and uh, throw this one in, it gets us to the elemental. And then if we go back in with the uh, dwarven windweed, we've got a lot of this. That then gives us the lesser glyph of despair. So uh, it gets plus one death damage. So this unit's melee and uh, missile damage deal death damage as well. So that's uh, arcane and elemental. If we go back even further, what else can we do? It's interesting, like the you know the way these little dots sort of then do work. Now we've got all of the uh, we've got a heap of this stuff. If we get rid of all of that and put in one of like so we end up with two lots of it. That's a glyph of the owl. Yes, yeah, so that's the XP bonus. I quite liked what we had actually with that one and then we just bol bolster the um, the elemental with this fur and get the uh, get this one here where we get a bit of death damage so we'll craft that one as well that should then take us through if we go to the back to the grimoire and then go back into the artifice so we've, we've done two this by the time we get the second one here we'll end up ha having the four and then we'll then sort of progress the story on, on a little bit further as well there's a fair bit of different parts to this which is interesting um, okay, Holy Weapons is now complete. Elemental Weapons. I'll start the research. Yeah, let's go that way. Select type. Um... Oh, it's way over there, way over there. So it's a fair way off. Takes a little while to get there. That's where there's an artifact hidden. We might do that again. I'm getting plus three now gold with the art of the workshop that was now created. Um, Waiting orders. Yeah, it's a mineable location. I don't think any of these guys have got mining abilities. Okay, we've picked up some ignition and we've got a smoke bomb. We'll just continue that one. There's nothing we can do there. No, that's okay. So these are all mining locations. Now if we go into the... Actually, I should really come back in here. I can pick up extra slots in through here and in here by placing this lodge. I just want to place it in between there. That way I'll pick both of them up. I think it'll pick up both. Okay, so we'll end our turn there. Uh-oh, here comes another one. It's taken our capital. So we've got ourselves a, um, a core dweller and a uh, an ashen one. Now, in terms of building this one here, Yeah, that will pick up both of those. That's fine. She didn't, didn't place it there. So this is an easy victory for us. I think I'll just auto-resolve this one. 
Although maybe we have a look and see because we'll be finding these a lot. So we'll start the battle. And so that will just keep on spawning. We do have to sort of look after, like, you know, protect the uh, protect the, the location. Now these have got magical abilities. They breathe fire and does a fair bit of damage. So it's got fireball, uh, fire breath. So we have to be careful of these. back for now. Now we've used up all of our action points. So a fair bit of damage has come back this way, but this is actually okay for us. So we're going to move in, do a flanking shot there. That one can't do anything. Another flanking shot there. Now again, it's another action point gone that it can't use next turn. strong. Yes. Okay, um, so Hi-Fi Panda saying a glyph that gives extra experience would be really nice on the hero. Uh, Kill Vulture says I agree, and that's exactly what we've got. <laughs> The Alf, the 20% 20, 20 experience bonus. So we did that, we, we put that one on um, right at the start. So he is getting extra experience, but we just it just takes a bit of time, that's all. He's got one shot. Ooh, we're down to two here. I'll just finish this one off. Gee, that was close with him. Very close. You saying got gobbies in your armies? Yes, we do. That was very, very tight with this one. <clears throat> so uh, I'm not going to be able to get back out there easily. This one's now finished what it was doing. And we want it to start to come across now and mine these locations. Now we've got the Greater Glyph of Despair that's been crafted which um, we've picked up a bit more stuff now as well. We've got a couple of death bombs in, in through there as well. Let's go and throw, this is interesting as well, the Twisted Horn. And that gives us the uh, death. This is uh, the Grave Robber trait. So plus one remains uh, an additional loot after each Battle one, yeah, uh, just means we get more, more death that we can then uh, deal with. These can be used as well, by the way. We can throw these in in fights, which I might sort of leave them around. Um, now we've got got one in through there. That gives me. Oh, the life then takes away from the death. I didn't know it did that. That's interesting. That is interesting. Um, what else can we do? Let's 
Depths of Despair. That would then take it up. I don't know if that would actually do anything different. It changed it into a lesser glyph, which we wouldn't want to be wanting to do. Gold Nugget said it points to every essence you already have uh, a point invested. This could be useful. It then takes it to Elemental and Arcane with only one off, off life. So um, if we grab one more life area. Wow, Weapon of the Leader. So this is a uh, this unit and every ally in its uh, stack gains plus two willpower. That sounds good. Let's do that. So that gives us one each of all of these. When we open up this slot, we're going to then be able to do a lot more as well. So let's craft this so we end up with an artifact. That sounds good. I do like this aspect of the game. Like it's it is good and it's um, and this bit is more random than the uh, than the stories as such. But we ultimately have to then go back into this one. So the game is good. It's a good game. It's um, it's uh, oh there we go. We've actually now already got that one. So I'm glad I didn't build the other one. In their turn. Uh oh. Now yeah, I've got two fourteen versus their one fifty four. Now the one that we really want to make sure that we that survives is is this one here. So the others I don't care too much about. Start the battle. Uh, these aren't random. These are. This is the same sort of uh, map that we've seen before. And we've got a couple of, of ranged units in here. This is axe wielders again. We should be okay as long as we don't catch fire. Yeah, that'll kill that one off. Uh, if you equip that sword, uh, we have to build it first. Six turns to build. Good, that's uh, got our confidence up a little bit. And we'll just come back in and just guard. That way we get 20% extra protection. means our retaliation strikes are going to be good. See that, uh, if you were playing as a human, you would have definitely gone after that one because there was no more retaliation strikes left for it. But the uh, game is being nice to us. Into saying so as a necro you, you can't create an undead with positive life so you need to you need to negate life with death oh okay there we go kill that one off <clears throat> so a little wandering stack uh, we've done okay there so we do need to have a, um, a like a fairly strong force near home all the time particularly if we're playing the higher difficulty levels Go looter. I think 
the armor is is good for them. Backstab and melee. I'll go backstab. I'm, I'm trying to sort of use them as much as possible in that sort of uh, capacity. <clears throat> so we've now got these. Now I, I'll just come up to this one first because we've taken a bit of bit of damage. We can mine this location. These have also taken a lot of damage. Now, what does that one give us? Okay, it just gets us. Um, yeah, so we, it, we get ten percent uh, better room crafting. What if we do that? We're going to get two gold there. So I think I'll wait inside the tower just for a little while. Force the end of the turn. Yeah, four more turns for the sword. One more turn for the lesser glyph of despair. Actually, one thing we were going to do was to go back into this one and put in that greater glyph of despair on this one here to make it fearless. The other one we've got left there is another mountain goat one for doing more mining, which we won't do just yet. We'll close that one off. Yeah, here we go. We've got a, a group that's going to be attacking us. And so that happens as well. Uh, New Day Dawn's bringing uh, forth uh, challenges and dangers throughout the land. Cir the circle uh, resents your growing power. And so this is this circle, guys, and they're all going down by negative 10. <clears throat> so this is not the circle. This is just a wandering stack. 172 power. We've got a little bit of, of, of stuff in here. I'm just going to keep this one in the tower for now. So two more turns before we get that one. Now, if we have a look at the grimoire, so that one's now been done, and now we have two more. And so uh, an artificer uh, needs a constant influx of ore. It, it, is, a, um, it is a necessity for creation. Uh, building minions capable of the task should be my first priority. Now, we had to invest either like two two of the beer and one of the, um, the lesser glyph of the mountain goat. We, we happened to have both of those. Now, I didn't know. I forgot that I was going to need those. So we just happened to have them. That was lucky. And severing the bond, the bond between glyph and uh, recipient is impossible to sever, as one of them perishes when trying. But there, um, but there are reports of dwarves who have managed this separation. So kill ten dwarves to learn their secrets. So we'll have to find more of them. We've we've got none of them. Let's invest this. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we now have um, summon artificer minions, so uh, we can actually now summon those. Actually, there we go. So we do have them. They do cost me a couple, but I think we'll do that. Grab another one of those. You lose to invest the uh, 25. Yes, we do. That will give us another one of those other units. That's excellent. And um, actually, I've, that's, well, that was a mistake. I should have I should have used what I had there. So uh, Neithal's Blessing. So overlapping magical fields emanating from glyphs uh, prevents their carrier from receiving uh, more than two. So we need to mine 10 locations. Okay, well, we're, hopefully we'll have this next one done fairly soon. attack us not yet still one turn away there one more turn and this one will be at, at full strength I don't think there's anything else we need to do there Got a heap of stuff in through this one. Oh, as you wander the wind, uh, wind wall mountains, a sudden avalanche crashes down next to you. It barely passes your troops, ripping stones into the deep and uncovering a cave entrance. From within, you hear a hungry and dangerous growl. <clears throat> now, looking at the time, guys, I'm going to have to start to wind up things. So, snow leopards, defend, your, uh, defend yourselves. 
hide behind, behind those boulders. Now we've got they've got 156. These guys are all back up to being strong again. We'll run. Let's hide behind the boulders and see what actually happens here. So the small pack of snow leopards uh, jumps forth from the cave and takes off into the mountains. They must have been trapped in there for some time. With them gone, you take a moment to inspect the cave. They sprung from it among the tube remains of at least two dwarves. You find some coins and riches. What a sad fate to be trapped with hungry snow leopards. Um, so we've got, uh, we, we better leave or we'll meet the same fate or we can give them a proper burial. Now, if we do that one, I think we'll give them a proper burial. And we then go up, we get a blessing so um, uh, for the next fight. So that was a good thing to do. Um, so we've finished that location. We've now got more artificing that we can do in through here. Got another one of those. The death. What other death ones have we got? Do you have got? Actually, that's interesting. We've got. We can sort of put death and uh, arcane back to light in, in together again. I've only got these to sort of start the process. We need the ore in there to get started. Then we've got the, um, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Which one was I going to use? Okay, death. It's a grave robber. And then we put one of those in. Spider, we're in touch. Oh, okay, this looks good. Okay, we'll, we'll grab that one. So we're getting more and more crafting areas that we're sort of uh, that we're sort of finding out how to do things. The um, the sky iron was good with the despair, the higher level despair. We are learning the crafting as we go. I do I do like this aspect of the game, and I like that it's unique for this particular unit. So yes, there is replay value in the game. It's just not through the map as such. Now. These here. Let's go and mine this location as well. Waiting orders. <clears throat> now they've wandered off. Uh, we could chase after them. Oh, they've got those in the way as well. And I think we'll um, we'll stay stay close to home. What's this one up here? Mana stash. Maybe we should do these. These are only 140. I'll make this the last thing we do in this session. And um, actually, what's this one? <clears throat> so it's got the watchtower. Okay, so those resources are going to run out in one turn. That's okay. We've got we've got a bit of a uh, bit of gold coming in. to hunt down these other ones as well. We're still a bit damaged in this side, so we'll start the battle. So, um, uh, Kaiselina Kais saying spider is great on range units. Oh, okay. I'll have to have to give that a, a go. Frostbite there. Yes. There's not much not much retaliation. as it tried to run away. Ok, 
Okay, that's good. We should kill this with all the opportunity attacks. There we are. I get that one. Let's move up out of the way. Level up available. Now we've got uh, piercing attack, so plus six damage against uh, units with armored, or just I'll get more armor for itself. I'll, I'll put the armor on there. And we'll end our turn. Oh, here we go. This is one of the circle groups. We get the Guardian. So traveling is blessed by the Guardians as many seek uh, to visit nearby temples. So uh, plus one world map movement. So these groups in through here are um, the Granite Dwarves. Now actually I don't know if we if we may get be friendly enough with them. Um, I don't know where we see that in the game. Factions in through there, active spells, stacks, heroes. I thought it was under factions. Maybe they're not. They may they may be the um, like when we gave the burial and stuff like that, it may impact what happens with them. Let's finish off these bandits. Yeah, so they've been badly injured by the other dwarfs. through here. So they're going to have an advantage because they've got the height. If we can sort of um, have a better, better look there, but we can't really. This is a bit, a bit dangerous actually. Very dangerous. Oh my god. Well, that's not going to... I don't know when we've got the autosave. <laughs> that's not what we want, though. That was terrible. I'm going to have to see if I've got an autosave that, um, that gets us back out of that. Because that is not good. At the time, I thought, oh, I should, I should just quickly uh, you know save before it before we go into these fights even though it looked like it was gonna be easy there we go I'll have a quick look and see because I, I don't want to be losing that unit it's sort of it's too important to me I'm just gonna continue for now Our game what I save yeah that one would be it I think Let's load that one in. So I think we'll be okay. So um, Joan is saying the game auto saves at the end of each turn. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Okay, cool. We're back here again. So um, now look at the time. I will actually just play this battle out properly. Yeah, so it was weakened anyway, but um, yeah, it didn't help. Start the battle. This time we'll be a bit more, a bit more careful with how we do it. It's interesting. It's a different map than what we had before.
Yes. Bring them up. Sort of in behind the trees as well. I can get into the tree line there. I can actually kill that one off straight away. Tries to run away, we won't be able to go anywhere. Right, that's better, that's better. It's got to plan ahead a little bit. I was just a bit too thinking it was just going to be easy, and it wasn't easy. Now, I can't remember what these guys are. The Granite Dwarves, they're not the... Um, these are the faction in this region. I think I'll just go back to the back into here. But now we have another level up in, the, in through this side. So we have Core Lightning. So it uh, deals 28 white damage on an enemy within four range. That sounds good. Uh, we also have Meditate. Restores one focus on, to this unit per action used. Or uh, Earth Armor. So apply Earth Armor to an allied unit in three range. You get plus 50% physical resistance, which is fairly cool. Look, we do damage anyway, so we don't really need that one. It is good though. I think we'll, we'll grab that. It's good, we're getting some interesting, interesting, interesting choices now. Let's go for healing. Just go back to here for now, and um, if we didn't get the mana, we'll go back up and get the mana. I think we're supposed to kill them off. Yep. <laughs> yes, we are. Are they going to attack each other? Yes, they did. That's interesting. And they've still prevailed. Well, that was interesting. What an interesting turn of events. So we're being pillaged at the moment, so we have to finish it off. All of for weapons is now complete. So, um... So this unit's melee and missile attacks uh, deal uh, elemental damage, so elemental weapons in through there. Yeah, but this, uh, this one is ready to go as well. Yeah, well, well, we'll bring it back in. There's really not much for it to do to do with anything. It's I could change this one across. We we are using the herbalist. So I do want this one to keep on leveling up. Like this one's sort of fairly important. But we need to come back in and deal with these. And I'll make this the last thing we do in this particular run. But the game, you can see there, the combat in the game is, is very, very good. Like it's very solid. So Xander Cap was then saying, is this the reverse dwarf fortress? Yes. <laughs> This is back into our in our tower. Yeah, these are fairly weak. We've got the axe wielders back in through there, and then just the dwarven workers at the back.
start to cause the damage. Yeah, we can kill that one off as well. Okay, so it gets rid of all the dwarves. That's three dwarves, is it, that we now killed, or two? I can't remember which. Um, we'll have a quick look and see where we are in the grimoire. Um, all right, so we've got them all killed. Uh, we'll just go continue. Yeah, so what, one of the fact, an unknown faction um, likes us doing this, but we don't know who that actually is. Get the level up in through here. Oh, here we go. We've got uh, Tendon Cutter. So it deals 29 physical damage to an adjacent enemy. Applies Rooted. That's good. And we've got Poisonous Touch. Um, all attacks can inflict poisoned as well. Hmm. Getting up to better levels. Uh, better sort of, sorts of units now as well. Um... Okay, Poison. that one off. So it's level 3. So we've got quick reflexes, so plus 20% damage reduction against missile attacks. Yep, sounds good to me. Uh, we've already got this one here, so we'll leave that one in the Glyph of Despair with the Fearless. And um, I haven't seen the burning, like this Glyph here it seems to be wasted, to be honest. And I think that if we did this one as well, I don't know if we're going to get death damage coming back in with that one. I think it has to just go onto a, a standard old uh, range unit, like one of these guys. I might just place that one on there. Okay, so uh, we're back here. We've stopped them from pillaging our, um, our location. It's not as terrible as some other games, like where you've, you know there's no real big morale loss. This looks interesting, and through this side, we might start to... Um, these are other like, quest locations and things as well. The Shapers were like the precursors to the various races. They sort of came in after the demigods, and um, they're the ones who found the Allfire. They'd be, that would be good to get some of these. So we might start to move out that way with this group. I don't know what to do with this one. Maybe I'll just have it tag along. Come along for the ride. More research. Yeah, actually, that wouldn't be bad to get better, better things in through there as well. Okay, so they deal white damage in through there with the holy weapons. This is the guardian area. Uh, what else are we doing in through here? We're going to have a quick look. Yeah, we got three, three of the dwarves. That's good. So we do need to kill off those dwarves. There must be a better, bigger location back that that way as well. Um, so going back in, don't need that just yet, I'll grab that one, it's nice and fast. So actually we've got our weapon now, so enchanted uh, units melee and range attacks deal elemental damage. It's going to cost us a bit. We're getting plus eight. I think I might just let that one go back up again. We might just do another sniff gold and sort of uh, not waste it this time. 
Okay, that'll do. We'll close that one and go back into our hero. So he's now got the uh, weapon of the leader. Close. So we're getting better and better. I, I do. I've got to say, I really, really like the progression. It's not over the top, and it's uh, and it's meaningful, but it's still meaningful, like over time. So, guys, I'm going to leave it there. So, thanks for watching, and um, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, catch you guys tomorrow. It's uh, it's a good game. Like, it's it, it, the only thing I would prefer would be if it actually had a um, a random map. <laughs> Other than that, it's really, really good. So, um, I don't know what you guys are th thinking of it. Um, yeah, I'm a fan of the mole. Sounds nice. Uh, it says Hi-Fi Panda. I um, don't know if, if we can do that as such other than finding more things that we can then go and do um yeah so it's a um so J Jahone sent saying too bad the tower is so bland uh, we would expect archer towers walls and stuff yeah i know what you're saying it's sort of it's um it is sort of strange that there's no like no garrison or anything as well like that would be that would be good i know that the tower does improve over time like it, it gets bigger and bigger and uh, in, eventually it can then start to fly around the land and it can then be moved into locations. Like, for example, we lost that location up through there. That one's now disappeared. Um, so we only get plus one, plus one gold at this point in time. This one is also disappearing. So that one's going to go after a certain amount of time. Five more turns. So, um, yeah, anyway, it's it, I, 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 the base game itself is very very good it would just be great if there was random maps anyway guys gonna leave it there so thanks for watching and i'll catch you tomorrow